Glenn Greenwald is out there, and he's the hitman. Adam Curry, John C. Devorah. It's Sunday, July 14, 2013. Time for your Gitmo Nation Media Assassination Episode 530. This is No Agenda. Changing my icon to reflect my apathy here in the Travis Heights hideout in Austin Tejas, capital of the Drone Star State. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley asking the question, what is the color of apathy? I'm John C. Dvorak. It's Craig Vaughn and Buzzkill in the morning. Does it matter? <laughs> well, That's Mortimer. The color. Hello, Mortimer. I think the you owe me. The color is does it matter. Is it doesn't matter. Mortimer, I think you owe me one dollar. A uh, bull? What do you mean? I said there would be no riots. There was a riot in Oakland. Oh, a hundred people burning a, a container is not a riot, John. Please. Broken windows. Oh, woo! They, there's more. What do, you, what do you define as a riot? Like uh, L.A. riots. Come on. A riot. L.A. riots. Those were exceptional. Oh, oh now we're going to get technical? Please. I yeah. was right. I was right. No. There's no riots. You had a hundred people in Oakland, and that's it. And there's another one scheduled today. Ooh, boy. Okay. Keep your dollar. And San Francisco. Those are, there's not riots. They don't schedule a riot. They schedule a, a protest you march. Know, you know who's behind this? I got the biggest kick out of watching this because they had the printed signs. Oh, it, 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 this is the whole thing is so disgusting. But please give me this then. Keep your dollar. It certainly didn't pan out the way they hoped it would. Well, I think anyone who actually followed the trial might be, you know, a little unshocked by the results. No, well, not the results of the trial. The result. I'm saying the results of p people getting angry and taking to the streets. I, I think that this has shown that we are a nation of apathetic couch potatoes who do not care and who will not go act actually go out and 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 let our voices be heard on the street it does not happen oh, no, anymore I, I disagree completely there's a lot of people that want their voices to be heard on the street in fact i have a clip uh play the clip sf idiots on the street Respond to Zimmerman, and there's some great, really fantastic analysis here. Demonstrators say this trial has stirred up plenty of emotions. It's a son. It's a brother. How many more family members, black, brown communities have to be targeted before they identify this is a racist system? Quite frankly, the young black man, Trayvon Martin, was put on trial for his own murder. I think this is really unfair. Like he's free, and he actually killed Trayvon Martin for nothing. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, he no. killed Trayvon he killed... Martin for nothing. For nothing. <laughs> no, no. This is that's you don't have the right clip, man. You don't have it. I'm sorry, you don't have the right clip. Do you want All the right. clip? You want the clip here, brother? I'm there. All right, Jesse Jackson. All right. Uh, <laughs> Are you ready, that's brother? Always a topper. <laughs> Stand back. You know, first we got to get into, you know, how the justice system has failed. You know, uh, apparently he wasn't watching any any court proceedings, but the, he not. he ends it with just a butte. You know, first question, obviously, what was your reaction to this verdict? Frankly, I am I'm stunned over this grace, uh, this tremendous miscarriage of justice. Uh, <laughs> it started, <laughs> isn't that great? Right there. I'm like, OK, keep it going, Jesse. Um, the the when the what would the appropriate term be, John? Not miscarriage of justice, clearly. Although that's a title right there. What 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 is the what is the proper term? Uh, I'm an idiot. Signed <laughs> Jesse. When the jury says not guilty, he's at least guilty of murder. Uh, and, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> when the jury says not guilty, he's at least guilty of murder, just so you know. Armed man racially pursuing uh, and profiling a young African-American boy uh, and kills him. And in this case, the, um, uh, the prosecutor uh, denied, uh, should I say, ignored the, the, the matter of, of race uh, and the defense... Uh, turn it denied it, but the fact of the matter is, this is an <laughs> a pattern uh, of behavior toward young African American men. Whether it is Grant in Oakland, or Diallo in New York, or Trayvon Martin in uh, in Florida. Okay, get ready for it, and it's very painful. Reverend, I want to ask you about the makeup of the jury. Um, you tweeted this after the verdict was handed down. Um, you tweeted the jury, no black and no men, was always suspect. 
Do you feel that this affected the outcome, the makeup of the jury? Well, we, it was a stretch trying to uh, avoid the obvious that there was no, you speak of a jury of your peers, there was no man on the jury, and Trayvon <laughs> was, was a black boy. There was no uh, no man, no black on the jury, so at least uh, the idea of a jury of peers was, was a stretch all the while. Okay, l let me just explain to the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Uh, it is typically not the, uh, the, uh, it, the, the person who's dead or the uh, or the prosecution it is the defendant who gets the jury of peers <laughs> is this and and no mention by the way from this fine msnbc person that he's insane you well, you jesse yeah i mean he's sitting there saying trayvon oh, yeah. martin did not he hasn't have even seen any of the trial doesn't didn't follow but it john did you even hear what he said i i, th I don't think you heard it <clears throat> what did he say he says that there was no uh, jury of peers for Trayvon. That there yeah, should have been. Said. Yeah, but that's not. You, you get a jury yeah, of know, peers. I know. That's the point you're making. Yeah, but most people don't even hear this. This stupid MSNBC woman didn't even hear it. She. What do you? They were MSNBC. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a guy. Here's a here's a black lawyer, a very famous uh, civil rights attorney, been around forever. Kind of sums it up. He's not upset by this in the least. Name's John uh, Burris. He's in the, uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. And, and he says, as far as I'm concerned, this summarizes the whole thing. Oakland-based civil rights attorney John Burris said he was not surprised by the Zimmerman verdict. He spoke to ABC7 News tonight. The prosecution put on a witness that said that there was uh, a fight that was taking place. It looked like a fight, but Trayvon was on top of um, uh, Mr. Zimmerman. Uh, that The prosecution put that witness on. That witness turned out to be a better witness for the defense. And in my own view, ultimately, was the linchpin of the defense's case. Right. And yeah. this only leads me to believe uh, that the whole thing was rigged and the prosecution was out to lunch. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I stand. And, and, did you hear the, the latest thing? That at the very end, they started doing all kinds of crazy things. Like they, they wanted to add some, some charges, including child abuse. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Oh, that was excellent. <coughs> so a couple things uh, uh, about this, um, and I, I really wholeheartedly uh, disagree. I really, oh, be well, I, I disagree that that we have seen riots. I, I, I mean, yeah, there's, you know, there's people protesting and marching, and last night, yeah, you know, some people burned some stuff. But you know, that more happens when the when an LA basket when the basketball team wins. Ah, just, there's, there's, that's the point you should have made to begin with. Well, I, I, that's all right, but but so just that and that isn't even classified as a riot. It's just like people celebrating, <laughs> celebratory actions, like turning over a cop cars, yeah. torching them. No, they didn't even turn over a cop car. They painted. I'm talking about during the basketball. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, because they 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 been like you know f the police or whatever is what they painted. So, so there were no real riots. This is uh, in my mind actually a very very sad day for the United States because we cannot even get um, the population uh, of of the United States of, of Gitmo Nation who actually have a real reason to riot because they're living in squalor and poverty and racial profiling and all kinds of bull crap that happens. In the in the lower class lower class sections of our society that we sh don't really talk about, don't really see, certainly don't talk about all the real violence that goes on there on a daily basis, uh, and and no one really even they can't bring themselves to get up and get angry about it. So it's that's the it. The middle class riots this, does all the damage. Well, the lower classes have never risen up. Can I can I mention something here before you get carried away with all this uh, pontificating? Uh, I this to me was always a local story. The fact that anybody's even lighting a can of trash, and I do owe you a dollar, in Oakland is, is ludicrous to me. What's not a local? Oakland's got nothing to do with what's going on locally in Florida no. that we should even care. This thing was blown out of proportion by Al Sharpton. And Jesse Jackson. He helped out. Yeah. He helped out. Um, I, I did get one clip that I was kind of happy about last night that, that, that I thought was a real – this was a local story – a local news report um, in Florida about what uh, what the response was to the uh, verdict. Tallahassee resident Caleb Ross is on his way to a voting rights rally at the Florida Capitol, but he's chosen a different way to rally for Trayvon Martin. He's changed his profile picture on the social website <laughs> Instagram to all black. I feel like it's a good cause. I feel like it's very innovative for, for the youth to do that, and I see a lot of my collegiate peers doing the same thing all around the nation. 
Black squares are popping up all over Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Trayvon supporters who are changing their profile pics to black are calling it a blackout. It's a good way to rally for Trayvon. Some online posts and comments argue that using social media in this case is pointless, and the blackout really? has no bearing on the trial. Wendell McGahey is on the fence about whether to change his picture. I don't think it makes a big difference. I mean, we wore on hoodies, we walked around with Skittle wrappers and <laughs> so, soda cans. Yeah. This Facebook post soda says... Cans. Yeah, because remember, he was just drinking some uh, some... Iced tea and eating oh, some soda Skittles. Cans. Oh, yeah, yeah, soda cans, yeah. No, a black picture won't change the verdict, just as a pink ribbon won't cure cancer. Exactly. It's support. <laughs> you never know what impact it could possibly have. But this is, and I, and I have to say, I think that's kind of where it started. This really, the, the pre social networking, we had uh, the, the red AIDS vib, uh, the red AIDS ribbon. And that was kind of, I think that must have been the start, John. Don't you think we had the red no, AIDS no, I ribbon? I think the yellow ribbon around the old oak trees where it started during. Uh, so Tony was... Orlando is to blame for all this. I ultimately. honestly believe that's true. <laughs> um, the Bill Moyers. Because, that, because the ribbon, that was the first ribbon. It was MIA or something like that. And it was a yeah. yellow ribbon. Yeah, well, it's when you come and, home. Tie a yellow and, ribbon. And then, and the, then the little uh, AIDS ribbon became a, a like a like a uh, iconic ribbon. And then it was stuck on yeah. the. On the and I think that I still I would trace it back to Tony Orlando. There, there was a point in when I was still in mainstream douchebaggery and a, a minor celebrity on the scale that you could not go really to any public function, certainly not an award show, but you kind of couldn't go to anything if you didn't have a red ribbon. In fact, there would be people at the door like, oh, oh, Adam, hi, yeah, welcome. Uh, here, we've got your ribbon. Is this right? Is this true? It's absolutely true. So you got called out for not having a bunch of decoration? <laughs> well, they, they didn't call me out, but they would pull me aside. Uh, we've got a ribbon for you here. Kind of like when you go to the Princeton Club and you don't have a tie. All oh, right, you have to have a tie. <laughs> so they have a piece of crap tie they love. Yeah, I have done that a couple times, too, in the Princeton. They have to wear an orange tie. It's really stupid. Um, on the Bill Moyers Journal, there's a guy who was interviewed, and I, this may not be coincidence that, it, that this aired this weekend. Marty Kaplan, are you familiar with this guy, Marty Kaplan? Name rings a bell, but I don't yeah. know. Well, he wrote a book, and um, so they kind of lead in looking at the riots in Brazil. Those are riots, by the way. <laughs> and, 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 and I might want to point out there's some actual rioting going on in uh, Northern Ireland for the past two days. You know, like 30, 40 cops are wounded. You know, that's some rioting right there. That's real rioting. Do you have a, you have a little checklist? Of what, what, uh, of what a riot is? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think if uh, cops are down and... Uh, I think we need to put together the official No Agenda riot, official riot checklist. That's a good idea. Let me just look at the Book of Knowledge for no one No one's ever, second. has ever done that. Let me see. Of knowledge. Riot Wikipedia. <clears throat> Let's see. We can look there and see what the Wikipedia says. Uh, riot is a form of civil disorder characterized often by what is thought of. See, already it's slippery slope. As disorganized groups lashing out in sudden and intense rash of violence against authority, property, or people. Hmm. So I looked at the uh, the signage that these Oakland guys are all carrying. They're very beautifully printed. Obviously, it took a, you know some time before the trial was oh, over. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 of course. It says that that old group answer. And if you track it down, it's that old group answer A dot N dot S. You know, these guys used to be in all these demonstrations. And it's actually the world's, so, world's Workers Party out of New York. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, so uh, is that a union? No, the World's Workers Party? No, it's just a straight-up socialist front. Oh, okay. There's no union that I know of involved with any, any have, of these guys. I have no idea. And they have offices all over the place, all with different monikers. It's just, it's just, it's just a, it's a sleaze bag operation I, I think, of some sort. I think you're onto something, though. We should have the no agenda riot checklist, and and I think certainly if you have printed signs, it it's, by definition cannot be a riot. Would you agree? Yep, I'll put that on the list. Okay, so printed signs, no good. Has to be handwritten. Um, you ha um. Well, there there are certain levels. I think there has to be a, a percentage of cops have to be wounded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, this, is, yeah this is where our, our checklist goes to pot because, uh, hey, those guys are encouraging hitting cops. All right. Here's Marty Kaplan, uh, and he starts off res in response with Bill here. 
uh, about uh, we, uh, really what it's about is why the United States is a nation of icon changers. Um, tell me at any moment when you're tired of he- hearing him. It's only a minute or so, um, but it's pretty much what we've always been saying. Kevin, welcome. Thanks very much. And congratulations on those awards. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You recently... Words we will never hear, John. <laughs> congratulations on all those awards. Thank you. I confess to outrage envy. What's that about? It's my feeling that what happened in Brazil, which is so encouraging about citizens taking their destiny in their own hands, is not happening here. We Wait, have, hold on a second. Uh, on a- is this Liberace talking? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Huh. Employment and hunger and crumbling infrastructure and a uh, tax system out of whack and a corrupt uh, political system. Why are we not also taking to the streets is the question. And I want us to. You wrote, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. So are we not paying attention? We are paying attention to the wrong things. We are paying attention to infotainment, which is being spoon-fed to us. And sadly, frankly, we are enabling because we love the stuff. (laughs) The infotainment (laughs) narrative of life in America, you call it. Yes, the tragedy of journalism now Mm -hmm. is that it is demand driven and when you ask people what they want we're like one of those rats that have a lever to push and cocaine comes out and once that happens one time (laughs) by the way where is that lever it's coming (laughs) i'll sign up can i come with a vending machine can 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 it be a part of my google glass where I just uh, press it and cocaine oh, that comes sounds out. Like, that sounds like the next, uh, yeah, an add-on. <laughs> yeah, Google, you just like tilt your eyes up like that and the coke comes out while you're watching uh, Honey Boo Boo. Huh, I could go for that. So this, is, so this, it's actually, it's very entertaining to watch. Unfortunately, you're about halfway into it and then he goes into, you know, the president talked about climate change and no one was outraged. And I'm like, oh, okay, really? <laughs> I love the way these guys always work that in. <laughs> they always do it. Um, so, but this does bring some, because he goes into journalism, this does bring some very interesting uh, topics to the forefront. And something that happened in the midst of all this, uh, of all this hullabaloo is, uh, uh, well, there was a little report that came out that I don't think got a lot of attention, if any at all. And the announcement, I didn't even know it myself. Until I uh, uh, had my my daily viewing of Spokes Hole Carney, because this is the stuff we do. You know, we watch this stuff. We watch the press briefings and hey, it's what, what? I got another video running on my Skype. Oh no! <laughs> what is it this time? Audience TV. Why don't you sign up for advertisement? A, why don't you sign up for like, like Skype calling? What is that going to do me? Is that going to eliminate this crap? Yes, I think I think if you sign up for a Skype calling plan, when you just put like five bucks on it, uh, they uh-huh. eliminate. There's a, they, someone sent me a link like, about this. Is this is getting on my nerves. Well, hello, you took the free shiny trinket. You've got to take the. All right, the all right, pain. go on. You so you've been watching Carney. Yeah, here which he is. is a thrill. Yeah. President's session today with the Attorney General and has he accepted. Uh, Eric Holder's report on uh, media relations and and investigations. The president did meet with the attorney general uh, today in the Oval. By the way, how does that sound? Uh, He met with him in the Oval. In the Oval? In the Oval. When did that show up as a way to say it? First time I've heard it. In the He's Oval. in the Oval, man. He's in the Oval. <laughs> in the Oval. It sounds like something that the cage match you know, wrestlers would have. It sounds They're like... they going to be in the Oval tonight. It sounds like... Oakland so- Coliseum, 9 p.m. <laughs> Eric Holder, Barack Obama, in the Oval tonight. I need a little... Eric Holder, Barack Obama, in the Oval tonight. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> to, I immediately thought it was more like anal thing. I don't know. I was like, yeah, he was in the Oval. Like, ooh, okay. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, here's uh, the rest. And uh, the, the Attorney General did uh, discuss with him and present to him uh, that report. I believe the Department of Justice will be releasing that report this afternoon, but I refer you to them. So if they're releasing it that, this afternoon, that indicates that the President did accept it as it was presented? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment to make. We won't have any statement or comment on it before it's released, but I believe the Department of Justice is releasing it today. Okay. Did you uh, hear anything about this uh, report, John? No, I don't know. I, I don't know what he's <laughs> talking about, and I don't know what you're talking about. That's how obscure it is. Okay. First, let me uh, tell you that uh, there is a, 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 um, the Skype commercials is new, uh, and I'll put a link in the show notes. Thank you very much, chat room, uh, 
um, that shows how you're going to now be inundated with loud ads. In fact, they are called loud Skype ads. Okay. Uh, the report that uh, came out uh, was the self-induced report about the spying on the media uh, that the attorney general promised he would investigate himself. You'll recall this. Vaguely. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, it's a very important report. It was discussed in the Oval, as you just heard. It is uh, the Department of Justice Report on Review of News Media Policies. In other words, how we deal with the news media when it comes to investigating them. Uh, I think we do need to, uh, before we go any further, we need to, uh, one more time, I should have this plastered on the wall. In fact, I need to get one of those uh, Eric things. One more time, I'd like to just uh, recite the very short line that is the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. is very important in this case, just so you uh, understand. Uh, Congress shall make no law, no law, I repeat, no law, respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. Uh, So I will uh, abbreviate, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. No law. And now let's take a look at Eric Holder's document, which was discussed in the Oval, as you just heard, the President approves it. In May 2013, at the President's direction, the Attorney General initiated a comprehensive evaluation of the Department of Justice's policies and practices practices governing the use of law enforcement tools, including subpoenas, court orders, and search warrants to obtain information or records from or concerning members of the news media. I think this is important, John, because I guess what? We're probably not members of the news media. In criminal, for yourself. In criminal and civil investigations. As part of this process, the Attorney General convened a series of meetings to solicit input from a wide range of news media stakeholders. Were you invited? Not a stakeholder. First Amendment academics. Also I was holding a pork <laughs> chop at the time. <laughs> and advocates, as well as members of Congress. Based on this review, the Attorney General is making significant revisions to the Department's policies regarding the investigations that involve members of the news media. Well... That is just the preamble. Um, The department views the use of tools to seek evidence from or involving the news media as an extraordinary measure. The department's policy is to utilize such tools only as a last resort after all reasonable alternative investigative steps have been taken and when the information sought is essential to a successful investigation or prosecution. Gee, that sounds pretty much... Prosecution? Yes, that's literally what it says. Prosecution of what? Period. Of a media member? Yes. Like that poor guy from Fox? This is what it's all about. So now, they just want to go after the media. Oh, well, that's good. No, 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 the media no, no, really no, 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 responded no. well to this. No, no, this has a, this has a very specific uh, goal in mind, which is coming up in seconds. The changes in policy outlined in this report are intended to further ensure the department strikes the appropriate balance between two vital interests. Hmm. Protecting the American people by pursuing those who violate their oaths through unlawful disclosures of information. Uh. Let me just read that again. One of the vital interests is protecting the American people by pursuing those who violate their oaths through unlawful disclosures of information. Wow. And safeguarding the essential role of a free press in fostering government accountability and an open society. (laughs) Right. Uh, in addition, I'm skipping through the self-contradictory. Oh, yeah. I'm skipping through the uh, through the report here. Uh, here we go. In addition, as the president and attorney general have long stated, the administration will continue support efforts within Congress to pass a media shield law, which would codify or codify, whichever you prefer. Codifies. Codify. Many of the principles that inform the policy guidance described in this report. So the way I read that is, what we're really going for here, and what this has always been about, and what I believe the whole, even the snow job is about, is to instate a law, which would be unconstitutional by definition, a media shield law, and this is the blueprint for that, John. Because, of course, it was discussed in the Oval, and everyone's all in on it. So here the president and the attorney general uh, general restate in this document that Congress needs to pass a media shield law 
which would codify all of the principles uh, described in this report. So I'll just highlight a few. Uh, reversing the existing presumption regarding advance notice. Now, I could read this whole thing, but I'm just going to summarize it for you. Um, the Attorney General says, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to notify you if we're going to be snooping on your shit. However, there are, of course, certain sp- specific cases like, um, well, gee, what could that be? Uh... Well, since we've talked about Here this it is. weeks on end, national security be at the top of the list. I'll read it to you. Um, so they, they can delay this notification for 45 days or up to 90 days, which is probably long enough to get all of your emails and everything else you need. Yeah, it takes, you know, it's not something you get instantly. <laughs> yeah. For compelling reasons, advance notice and negotiations would pose a clear and substantial threat to the integrity of the investigation, risk grave harm to national security, or present an imminent risk of death or serious bodily harm. In those cases, uh, they do not have to notify the press, and it will go into the 45-day period, which, of course, will be determined by the Attorney General. Now, here's the beauty part. Under the new policy, the presumption of advance notice will be overcome only if the Attorney General affirmatively determines taking into account recommendations from the newly established News Media Review Committee. Yeah. Who should be on the News Media Review Committee? Let's see. Establishment of the News Media Review Committee. It will include senior department officials, including but not limited to department's director of the Office of Public Affairs and the department's chief privacy and chief civil liberties officer. That's it. That's your media review committee. (laughs) It doesn't include any actual members of the media. Heil! Yeah, that's pretty pathetic. Technical. That's a good catch. catch. Yeah, I'll just finalize here. We'll keep an eye on that. Well, they will establish a media dialogue group. (laughs) What does that mean? Well, the department will establish an attorney general's news media dialogue group to assess the impact of the department's revised news media policies and to maintain a dialogue with the news media. This group will meet six months after the proposed revisions to the department's news media policies are effective and on an annual basis thereafter. The you group... know, the... Oh, that's useful. <laughs> wait, wait. The group will meet to discuss any policy issues relating to the application of the department's news media policies. The group will include members of the news media, attorneys from various department components, and the director of the department's Office of Public Affairs. So let's let's look at this in a in a more um, Heil. realistic light. Heil. They've already got the news media in their pocket. Yeah, and that's not good enough. No, they got it set up right now, so it looks kind of legit. And they have you know the whole thing is kind of peopled with all these Obama bots. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but that's not good enough. No. Because there may be one lone wolf out there Mm -hmm. (laughs) that might actually write something meaningful. (laughs) Just might say something meaningful. Let's say, you know, whoever. I'm not even going to put Glenn Greenwald in that. No, you're not allowed to. And and by the way, I think, and we have to discuss this before the show is over. Might as well discuss it now, talking about idiots in the news media. Uh, This, of course, this was a, I don't know if this was an international story, but it was a good uh, distraction of the week, which we really haven't seen a good one for a while, and I thought this was a, a gem, which was the the reading of the bogus names uh, of the pilots, which... <laughs> wait, but, actually, wait, before you get into that, can I just finish off your green your Greenwald thought there for a moment? I, well, I've got some Greenwald clips, too. You can yeah, finish it off then or now. What? It'll just take me a moment. Because um, you were talking about the news media and how they've already got them in their pocket. So when when I was berating the freedom the freedom of the press foundation on Thursday, right. So one of our producers helpfully uh, tweeted Trevor Tim with double M. Was, right, who, that's the one that didn't have the Wikipedia entry. Right, he has no Wikipedia entry, and he said, "Yo, Adam Curry calling you guys out of shields." And he and he responded, and he's like, "Okay, Trevor great. Tim did." Yes, Trevor Tim. So I look into Trevor Tim, and not only has he written. Uh, Articles uh, encouraging the creation of a media shield law, which is insane for any journalist to even consider. 
He actually co-wrote the book on the First Amendment. This is how insane this is. So he is a uh, Here. an activist at the Electronic Frontier Frontier Foundation, specializes yep. in surveillance, free speech, apparently not, no. and government transparency issues. And then he says he worked for the former president of the ACLU and the Un and at the New Yorker, graduated from Northeastern. Uh, he's a lawyer. Yeah, but in and here it is. Uh, he helped the longtime general counsel of the New York Times, James Goodale, write a book on the First Amendment, which literally says Congress shall create no law. And this guy is 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 advocating. If you look down below on that page, I think that's where you are. You'll see that he is advocating a media shield law. So this freedom of the press foundation are like internet freedom. They don't they don't want this. They want exactly the opposite. Well, that's the way you do it. Right. But uh, but you know, it has to be said. <laughs> well, somebody's got to say it. You I have just to bring did. it. All right. And you know what? It's <laughs> well, not going to mean a damn thing. No, that's just that's what you say. I have influence. Well, you do actually. <laughs> so let's get to let's talk about the idiots in the media who who see a teleprompter. Now, I I, I got a couple of questions about this and and I let's face it, this is a distraction of the week. I'd like to hear the theme. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh yeah, uh, absolutely. The blah, 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 blah. of the week. Hey, oh, no. Now, now I, I would assume the international audience that, Yes. I don't. I would assume the international audience knows little of this, but I suppose it got out a little bit. So let's, I, I think it got pretty viral. Let's play pilots. Uh, this is the KTVU woman who seems like a pleasant enough person reading from the prompter. She looks like a soccer mom. Let's be honest she does, with you. Totally, totally. She's a total soccer, soccer mom. mom reading the prompter on weekends. That's that's who this is. And, and with just, <laughs> just to preface it, there's also a Chiron. So the Chiron guy wrote this up. So he wrote it up. So there's a number of people involved here. And then the part I want to discuss is how people start blaming each other. And the latest, oh, the latest. Well, let's, is, let's play it. Let's play it. So for people yeah. who have not heard it, and I'm pretty sure just about everyone who listens to this show has heard it. But you'd, oh, be, yeah. you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. And I'm glad you have the clip because it's important just for historical reasons that we have it documented. And by the way, best clip I mean, if if it wasn't already out there, it would have been clip of the day for either of us. I love this. This this I made I peed my pants. Cause of death and whether she was already dead when the truck hit her. We have new information now also on the plane crash. KTV has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are Captain Sum Ting Wong, <laughs> We Too Low, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ao. And the NTSB has confirmed these are the names of the pilots on board Flight 214 when it crashed. We are working to determine exactly what roles each of them played during the landing. And I'm I'm amazed by this. I I, I saw this. I'm like, this is this is so good. And the thing that disappointed me is ever you know the media who everyone laughs. Everyone is laughing with this. It's funny. It's yeah, hilarious. It's, really it's and, I, and you know me. I love humor in a in in sight of a disaster. It lightens the mood. You know, when someone's dying, I'm the guy with the jokes. Like, hey, how's that cancer treating you? I've you never can, noticed this, but go on. Yeah, right. You've never noticed this. Well, that's go all on, I do. Thesis, what do you got to say? Okay, and so then you you know when when. People, by the way, before you do that, you're the aeronautic guy. Yeah, I thought it seventy seven had like a two man crew. Yeah, but it had two crews on board. Okay. He had a release. Sure? Yes. Yeah, I'm very, quite okay. sure. It had, it, so it had four pilots, uh, four right. airmen, four drivers. And by and, wh and when have we ever heard a report about anything ever in the history of all these reports that we talk about? And we've done it for years. They ever mentioned a pilot's name? Why would they do it now? I you know I don't know. The NTSB is taking the blame for it. They're saying no, no, no. That's yes. changed. No, no, no. When did this change? This changed like just recently. There's a blog post on the SF Gate where apparently here's the way the story goes. First, they was like, "Oh God, what happened? It was our screw up." And they said because the NTSB doesn't give out names, and so then they found an intern, which is just to me is the funniest part of the story. Some guy unpaid intern. And by the way, if I was an intern and I could pull this off, I'd do it. I'm gold for, for the rest of John, my life. John, I'm looking at the NTSB website with a press release. Right. I know that. I'm telling you. If you let me finish. That's that's what's out there officially. But now it turns out there's another round of this. 
and the NTSB is now denying it. It has not been put on their website yet, but it's been discussed in the SF Gate in, in a Phil Matera blog post saying that, no, we did, it's turning into a cover-up thing. You watch how this devolves and people start pointing the finger at each other. I, I think it makes more sense that some joker – so you know, here's the way it would go, but it still doesn't. There's some aspects that still don't make sense because nobody cares about the pilots. So somebody calls the NTSB. They and they're at lunch because we're at West Coast time. Who knows? Some get, the intern picks up the phone. Hey, Bill, pick up the phone. Picks up the phone. Yeah, hello, Bill Meeker. Yeah, do you guys have the name of the pilot you can give us? Uh, no. Let me get back to you. I'll call you back. Give me your number. And they hang up. This is my scenario. And then the guy gets together with his buddies, and they dream up because you can't ad lib these names that quickly. No, no, no. This is well done. This is well done. This is like bend over and uh, yeah, Mike Hunt. Yeah, Seymour Butts. Yeah, Seymour Butts. Yeah, exactly. So the guys get together, a, a group of these jokers that are pay, getting paid nothing, and they got nothing better to do. And so they say, I'm going to call. you. She's like, Yeah, call him back. Call, 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 call him back. Call him back. Call him back. Do you think I should? I, I'm going to get in trouble. Just do it. And so they call them back and they give them these bogus names that they eat up, which is really the disturbing part about this, no matter who's at fault. The fact that someone would pick this this uh, call up, uh, write these names down, give it to the Chiron guy, give it to the writer doing the prompter material, and have the person read this straight-faced is amazing. Yeah. But th that said, at KTVU, I will tell that we had a guy at uh, Z uh, Ziff Davis or Z Detect TV – uh, Steve Porter, who worked at KTVU, and he says that Dennis Richmond, who was the longtime anchor at KTVU, once blew his stack because on the prompter there was a line left out at the end of one of the newscasts, and, and Richmond apparently just went nuts because they, they didn't have this line to read. And the line was, good night, I'm Dennis Richmond. <laughs> okay, and it was left off, <laughs> you know, off the read. Right, right. And got it, pissed you know, off. Heads will roll. Yeah. So this this place is a bunch of readers, and um, anyway, it's still not. I, I still think it's from what I can tell, it's still up in the air how this actually happened. Well, I but, I think it's fantastic media hacking. I love it. I find it really. I find it deplorable that uh, the the media is the news media in general is saying. These are racial slurs. No, they're not. It's not yes, racial no slurs. Is see more butts. It's not. They're saying, "Oh, this racial joke." It's not a racial joke. Why can't anyone just say, "Damn, that was funny"? Why? Can't, this is the cultural Marxism that we have devolved into. Is that we can't even admit that everyone laughed or everyone, every single person watches it. The chi the for the friggin' Chinas are looking at this. The Koreans, they're going, "That was that was funny." You know, I saw the uh, – I was looking at the comments on one of the uh, places that posted it early, and Boy, there was a Korean guy who chimed in, he sa and he said something interesting because I've noticed this too. He says the most Koreans would think this is funny. Yeah. But, but, I, but wait, he says, but I'm a Korean, and I don't. I think it's racist. Oh, screw you. And anyway. There's, what, there's, why is it racist to make fun of someone's accent? Why is that racist? Why is that now all of a sudden racist? Why are don't we... you ask around and have somebody tell you? I don't particularly know why. When I do, like I have this Indian accent I like to do. Oh, race, so, oh, racist. That's racist. And my argument is that is the number one way people speak English. If you look at the straight up numbers and you take a yeah. British accent, an Australian accent, American accent, these are all accents. No roughing. The Indian accent, <laughs> the Indian accent has the most. <laughs> yeah. There's more people that speak in that that tone, that 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 kind of funny way the Indians talk, and how's that racist? You're just you're celebrating the the Diver that style of we are celebrating diversity. We're celebrating diversity. I may want to speak that way in the future. Yeah, check this out. Don't rough. Don't rough. Why you are laughing? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> That's funny. It's funny. That's the uh, Japanese Apparently it's cultural not funny to everyone. Well, no, j jokes are, if a joke is funny to everyone, I think it's probably not even a joke anymore. It's, a joke doesn't, by definition, a joke have to put someone or something down. Isn't that kind of <laughs> no how they work? No humor. <laughs> no humor for you. So I'm, I'm, I'm dismayed by that. I really am. I'm dismayed 
that we can't have, you know, funny humor. Certainly, are you, in, are you just dismayed or are you shocked and dismayed? No, I'm just different. No, I'm not shocked and dismayed. I'm just a just little dismayed. dismayed. Yeah, just a little dismayed. Not, not, not too I much. I can see you being dismayed. Over just, this. just a, a tiny. Bit. However, if the idea was to get more airtime for NTSB chairwoman Deborah Hirschman, I'm all for it. I, I love this woman. <laughs> Is she She's hot there, or what? By the way, she is more telegenic than she is photogenic. Oh, my God. She, yeah, true. I looked her true. up. And no, she I agree. Medicine. But then I saw her on TV. Oh, yeah, she's pretty nice looking. No, she uh, she needs lighting and makeup for, for a still photography. But on television, she's dynamite. You yeah, look at her and you just like, yeah, I, man, I crashed that plane. Whatever you say goes. <laughs> I crashed the plane. It's my fault. Well, I'll just blame me as long as I can hang out with you more. She's I a think, fox. By the way. I want to play one more clip because I think the, the the clip that should have gotten more play is the clip is the which was on the tarmac somebody on their cell phone I guess that were in the wreck or whatever but this but this got no play at all and it's the no ambulances clip play this trying to help people who had been ejected from the plane during the crash. 911 emergency, what are you reporting? We just got in a plane crash, and there are a bunch of people who still need help, and there's not enough medics out here that need help. There is a woman out here on the street, on the on the runway, who is pretty much burned very severely on the head, and we don't know what to do. <laughs> no ambulance is on site for this plane crash. Lots of fire engines in the distance. Not one ambulance out here on the tarmac. Okay, ma'am. Stand on line. Let me turn you over to uh, San Francisco Medical. Okay, yeah, hold on. I, I heard this. Um, although and, I, and by the way, they did bring an ambulance and it ran over the woman. <laughs> yeah. What, so what are you complaining about? <laughs> Oops, sorry. I don't think that was that woman. I think they ran over a different woman. Well, they ran over somebody. Yeah. Well, but, but what, uh, are you, what are you saying? Like, there's not enough ambulances? Of course there's not enough ambulances. You can't. You you're can't. Gonna have a, but you'd think, you'd think an airport, if it has all these fire trucks. No. You know, they, First they, of all. They, You'd okay. think that if they, yeah, I know, where are you going to get the, I mean, there'd be mostly guys sitting around because there's a the plane accidents happen, what, once every few years at any one airport. Fire departments, uh, you know, if you call the ambulance in most places, the fire department's going to show up. It's not the hospital. Because your true 911, your true, the true heroes who really come for no money and just come to help you, that's the fire department. And they've got like our buddy Bad Bad Chad out there in Colorado. These are the guys who are doing the real the real work. If you want the ambulance, yeah, well, you better have your credit card ready. What the hospital's going to d- dispatch an ambulance? No, no, it's a all it's, grand. It's too. EMS. It's it's emergency medical services, but it's really fire fire yeah, department. Yeah, it costs you a couple grand. Yeah, but so the uh, every airport has fire services, but their their pri- you know the, their primary job is to take care of an emergency. But you can't have. You just can't have like a hundred ambulances running around. And who was this woman, by the way? That was unclear to me. Is she sitting in a plane calling nine one one? I mean, where was she? And she's talked about the street or the. I think she probably was one of the people that slid out of the thing, mm. and she had her phone on her. I don't and know. she called nine one one. You know, but it could be bull crap. The whole thing could be a could be. It could be. But for me, it's like if I see one someone with their head on fire, you know, and I'm going. Hey, man, this is an outrage. I'm here in the plane crash, <laughs> and uh, I need more yeah. ambulances. Where are my services? I need my services from my, my government is not servicing me. You know, I'd be like, I'd be running over this lady, see what I can do. Well, I'm sure that she maybe did that. We don't know. No, we don't. But, my, but what, what my can we conclude point. from this whole episode of stupidity? I hope you have a, uh, some conclusion, because I don't, other than it's just stupidity. And, and, and I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was hilarious too. In fact, the first time I saw, it, but what the the thing that still gets me is that it went through so many chants. This is the problem. I this is my conclusion is that we've become so kind of you know we're not, we're so disconnected, especially the broadcast media and the newspaper people for that matter, so disconnected that we can't report. We can't just you know actually see reality. I mean, if you this this was the most obvious joke you know let's play the clip one more time and and tell me if you could actually with a straight face read this copy no i can't play this again come on (sighs) really yeah don't you think it's funny enough to play again (laughs) one more time then cause of death and whether she was already dead when the truck hit her we have new information now also on the plane crash ktdu has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight they are captain sum ting wong we too low, 
Ho Li Fook and Bang Ding Ow. I mean, come on. <laughs> Some the, the, more people. The Chiron guy must have known. The Chiron guy, or who you know, or gal, they must have known. You look at it's like, all right, whatever. They told me to write it on here. I'll do it. Uh, I mean, if I was the news reader, I would be so steamed. No rapping. No, she is. She no, she's happy. She has the part time gig on the weekends because you know she's shuttling around soccer boys all day. I, you know, it's just exactly what she looks like. I've seen her every so often. And she I does. think she's all she's only on the weekends. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure. So, Adam. Yes. Big news today. Before we get to our producer segment, we got to mention this. Uh, okay. Uh, in the United States, July 14th, which I believe is today. Yes. Has been branded National Macaroni and Cheese Day. No, according Get to the Wikipedia. Out. What? No. Go to uh, if, if, if Macaroni I had no- and Cheese. Oh, this is no good. If I had known this, then I would have put together a whole celebratory clip. You slaves can get used to mac and cheese, mac and cheese, mac and cheese, cheese. macaroni and cheap cheddar melted together. Mac and cheese, mac and cheese, mac and cheese. Living the mac and cheese life. Mac and cheese by Ayn Rand. Wow, what a day. Now, this was documented, supposedly. We could have done a whole I, I, special... I really wonder whether, if somebody slipped this into the Wikipedia just for our benefit. And by the way, Dvorak's Law, not allowed in the Wikipedia. Mac and Cheese Day, no problem. Rock on, boys. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Supposedly, the Wisconsin Cheese Talk page is referenced oh, okay. about uh, about this, but I see no nothing on and how, this page. how are the French with this? I mean, the, the French, of course, celebrate uh, this... The uh, Bastille Day today. Hello, French listeners who never donate. Yeah, then they never listen. <laughs> That's okay. And now they're out. They're done. They gave up. They're, they're, they won't be back until what? August, uh, yeah. September. Yeah, they're, 1st. they're on vacation. Yeah, they take a nice ninety-day vac or what? Yeah, forty-five-day vacation. It's not bad. Okay, so what's the history? What's the history on this Mac and Cheese Day? National? It's the Wisconsin. Okay, WisconsinCheeseTalk dot com. Let I'm me see it. what Wisconsin. Hmm, cheese industry? Anybody? Here this it is. is. Blatant PR move. Here it is. National Macaroni and Cheese Day is a little link in the on the tags, and it says nothing. If this is bull, bull, I'm just. But I thought it was worth mentioning. It's sad, is what it is. <laughs> it's, it's, yes. Yeah. All right. In the morning, John C. Dvorak. In the morning to you, Adam Curry. In the morning to all the ships that see boots on the ground, feet in the air, and subs in the water, and all the dames and knights out there. Yes, and to our uh, human resources in the chat room there, noagendastream.com, noagendachat.net. To our artists, thank you very much for your undying support, noagendaartgenerator.com. TJ Scurata, or Sciurata who I believe is a new artist to be used in the artwork. Thank you very much for episode 529-er. And always, as always, looking forward to uh, what will uh, happen today with episode 530 as we choose it after the show. It's always funny to see the art that of uh, that artists are trying to get in on time. Because, of course, it's not, you know, making art is not like, oh, the show's over, let me whip something up in three seconds. That's, so, what, they had, that's what they do. Yeah, well, that's the best ones typically are that. But um, a lot of times you'll see people... Uh, Trying to anticipate what our topics will be. Yeah, they, then you know, the, 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 we can have, we can generalize about that. They're mostly wrong, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> but it's kind of interesting to look at it because when we look at these, say, oh yeah, I guess I guess a lesser show <laughs> it would, would have, have discussed, would have discussed this sort that. of mainstream <laughs> yeah. media yeah, item. Yeah, like Barack Obama eating broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're all about. I, I mean, I'm. It's even dot. Well, I think we did pretty well. This is the first time we talked about the Zimmerman trial, and we only really talked about it in the context of the apathy of the uh, slaves of America. And I'm not talking about black people. I'm talking about all people. Before you well, get I nailed think people for that, should be up in arms about being spied on twenty four seven. No, no, no. Well, let's let's do our let's do our executive producers. Okay, and we do have some executive producers to thank for this show five thirty, including. An, un, an incredible uh, two members of the 530 Club. This has not happened in months. Months? Months. I think years. Mm, well, months for sure, perhaps a year. Yeah. The Black Baron of Silicon Valley came in with $530.33. Wow. 
And he says, in the morning, Adam and John, keep up the good work, because this is one of the best ways to get news and not the agenda. And this is so nice, the Black Baron of Silicon Valley, because he's been donating nice amounts for weeks now. Yeah, he's... he's uh Oh, Definitely on a roll. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sundays are always tough, and this really helps. And then then uh, Edward Jacobs came in with $530 from Providence, Rhode Island. Good old Providence. Remember them? This is where my mom is from. From the Sopranos. Uh, <laughs> they weren't from Providence. No, no, but they'd go there to get the really talented hitmen. Oh, yeah. My mom uh, grew up in Providence. My, uh, my great-grandfather played for uh, Pawtucket. Ooh. Yeah. He he actually my great grandfather. The Pawtucket Roosters? I don't know if they're called the Roosters, but he <laughs> once he, he was a pitcher and he had a no hit run no hit no run game and he had the last so it was you know what wait, is wait, it? Wait, 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 no hit well actually you could have a no hitter with a run, that's true. You could walk him. You can walk him, yeah. Isn't that but isn't that what it's called? No hit, no run? No, they're just called no hitters. No hit. Okay. So it had no hitter. Uh, but also n no one on base. So no one had gotten on base at all, period. Oh, that's a perfect game. That's a lot different. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so he had nothing had happened. No, so no. He, had, he had a perfect game. In other words, he had but wait, but wait. 27 straight outs. Yes, but the very last ball. So it's, you know, it's like. He didn't th have it. It's three. In no, no, one. I'm, I'm getting to the story. I'm waiting. It's the, you know, what? so what is it? It's bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth. Uh, no one's on base. Uh, it's uh, he's got two strikes, three balls, right? So this three so and two count, three and two. Yeah, he throws an egg, like a, and the batter, true American, just stood there, didn't swing, to give my great grandfather the true record. Oh, so he threw just a just a pitch down the gut, total total like girly pitch. He completely huh. choked, and the guy just went, no, I'm not going to hit it. I'm letting you have it. Oh, that's sweet. Isn't that a nice story? Yeah. Yeah, Gompy. Well, I uh, hope he kept the ball. Uh, <laughs> so Edward Jacobs, uh, love your show. I've listened to In fact, if, if you bring this up, because our, our local favorite pitcher around here, Tim Lincecum, just had a no-hitter. Really? Regular one. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, last night. It's it a, big a big deal. deal. It's cool. It is. No, it's a big deal, to, yeah. so nobody hits the ball. Love your show. I've listened to, and he's and he only walked too, so he was only two walks away from a perfect game himself. Mm. And he threw 140 pitches. Wow. I've listened to No Agenda from uh, Move Mature into the best podcast in the universe since 2009. Apparently, we were not the best podcast in the universe. Hey, what does mature mean? It means we've we, we've gotten old. <laughs> yeah. All right. Got it. Thanks. I would like to say <laughs> thanks to Tony Cruz or Cruz for turning me on to the show. Uh, last time I donated, by the way, everyone has somebody who turned him on to the show. Last time I donated, Adam thought I was a drunk cripple, thinking my <laughs> rehab was for drinking. What's your problem? <laughs> but it was actually for both hips replacement, you douche. No, he, he didn't use the douche thing, but that's what I'm thinking. I've since fully recovered and was released to return to work in early May, only to find out there was a resource action, a.k.a. layoffs, no. and no job to return to. Oh, geez. Well, the company paid me to leave, so I'm sharing a percentage with you guys, $530. Does he need, he pass on? Does he need job karma or something? He needs job karma and a little girl, yay. Okay, wow. <laughs> hey, man, I'm sorry. I didn't... <laughs> Cripple. Yeah, be quiet. Jobs, jobs. Jobs and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. Yay! You've got karma. Yay! There you go. And then we have uh, Andrew Largeman, is the name he goes by, in uh, Taipei City, $333.33. And we do have a note from him, and I, I opened it up in the email and left it on the other computer. I got so it. I got it here. I got it here. Okay. In, in the morning, John and Adam, here's the second installment toward my knighthood. The goal is to earn my knighthood while I'm at age 33. Yes. A very good goal. I turned 34 in September, so I'm just a couple of months uh, away. The show continues to be an outstanding product, and the entertainment value you provide is second to none. I am constantly attracting sideways glances by bursting into laughter on the subway train or singing along to the jingles in the elevator. Seeing that I am from Taiwan and a native speaker of Mandarin, please give me a Huntsman Zai uh, Shang Wu combo. Uh, oh, yeah, Huntsman and Zai Shang Wu combo. Thank you. Bon voyage to Adam and Mickey. Oh, that's for our upcoming uh, trip. Well, absolutely. Here you go. 
I wonder if he uh, if he sings along to the jingles uh, as uh, as a Mandarin as well. Riving Ramakan Chi Life. You're just asking for it. I am. I'm really trying. Sir Sizzalot <laughs> in Toronto, Canada, two hundred fifty dollars. ITM bitches. <laughs> I was listening while in the garden checking for Monsanto contaminated roses. When you confirm there will be no shows for a week, that's well, that's not true. Not we're gonna, that's not we're true. We're going to run shows. Yeah, it just won't be live uh, recorded actual shows. They it will be fresh material. Right, I think. Right, yeah. well, <laughs> right. I, don't know. I was thinking of rerunning one of that two hundred point five right. show. At least. <laughs> Not that one again. <laughs> uh, well, we're, 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 we're currently we're thinking. Well, it's hold on, be fresh hold material. on a second. I got an idea. I already have some interviews in the can. Well, we have that, but you know, we also, if, if we could ask our producers to put together a compilation. That could be. I I find. <laughs> no, no, no. You know how you know this is going to work, right? What? No, what do you mean? It's not going to work. They're not going to do nothing. Well, it, it would be great because you know. Well, we have noagendacd.com, and the guy's doing it. His boss is actually paying him to do this. Okay. Maybe, maybe well, we can do like two no agenda CDs because they are they're really they're good compilations of stuff, and it's short little bits, and it's funny. It's funny stuff sometimes. You know. Anyway, yeah, you're right. Okay. No one will do anything. <laughs> Just, <laughs> re onward. Uh, I would be somewhere. Uh, said. And while I will be somewhere sunny during that time, I started to have a heart palpitation. Indeed, I may have suffered a mild stroke. Oh. If I need a no agenda fix that badly, then you need my value for value, which is 250 bucks. Soon to be Baronet the Sismark, Sir Sizzalot, a sexy growl science karma, please. What is, is that uh, Dr. Kiki? Is that what he means by sexy growl science? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, I don't know. Shut a... up oh, yeah. already. Science. Science. Arr, arr, arr. Science. And a karma, of course. Oh, I'm, of course. I'm so sorry. What am I thinking? You've got karma. How am I sounding, by the way, on the on the box today? We we did some more hacking on it. You so, sound uh, uh, actually. You sound a little. Uh, you're not as boomy. I, you actually sound better because it's a much more. Um, it's funny you say that because that's what everyone is saying. They say it sounds more natural. Right. It sounds, uh, but it, but is it? Do I still sound like I have big balls? Okay, it, it's. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to. Get, I want to come up with the right analysis. I know what you're saying, but the big balls, most of them, you were getting from the from the. Uh, you weren't getting natural big balls. Right, you were getting right, the right. Balls from the the big ball over compression. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Correct. Over compression. Yes, like which you I had like. Balls in a in a vice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's. Get, I think it's a better sound because it's. I think it's cleaner. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Okay, good. Nice, nice. Uh, Chris Taylor in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, 250. Chris Taylor from Raleigh, NC, donating to help promote, promote, <laughs> promote, promote the best podcast in the universe. Keep up the good work, and yeah. one slave at a time will win this fight. There's a yeah. fight? I don't know. What are we fighting for? I don't know. What are we fighting for? I, for Don Lemon. I'm fighting for him. Good for you. <laughs> Someone, Peter McConnell someone's got to fight Suzhou, for him. Suzhou, China. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what was that? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, great. You gesticulated, and all of a sudden, all the gear went flying. No? Well, let me just read away, because I'll assume this is still being recorded. Peter McConnell, $202.20 in Suzhou, China, or China, as he puts it. Greetings from Suzhou. Oh, shit, John. Hold on a second. Uh, do you have to stop the recording? All right, and we're back. I've, uh, I've and, and I actually I ran upstairs to get the soldering iron. I'm like, I might as well do this right. But um, I also have a little uh, clip wire, so I'm able to... You know, I got I got the clip wires on it, so it should be okay until the rest of the show. Wow, that yeah. was now. Let, let's just don't do that in Holland. No, let, but let's just retrace the steps. I was I was saying how great this is, and then two seconds later, it it literally like jumps off the table onto the floor and All and shatters itself. and shatters. Shatters. What, what is that saying? It's saying that you didn't do the uh, Sanko de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Right? That's yeah. it. thank you. Right. I told uh -huh. you Sanko yeah, de Mayo. Sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, where were we? So in other words, what you did, here's what here's how superstition works. 
since you didn't get the Sanco de Mayo in, uh, yes, you had been subconsciously scheming to sabotage the show <laughs> to yes. prove yes. your point. And I and I specifically wanted to really hurt the thing I've been working on that I cherish the most. Yeah, that is fragile. This is like this is the same thing. This is the way everyone does this, by the way. And I'll, I'll point this out. It's like you you got you, you signed yourself up for something you don't want to go to it. And then somehow you lose your keys. <laughs> and you can't find them anywhere. And then you find them. They're on a shelf in the cat in the kitchen cupboard because you put them there thinking, oh, I'll remember I'll put them next to the peanut butter because I'll remember where my keys are. Because this who else where that's easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then you never find them, and you miss the meeting. No, you're so right, and and, and yeah, that's what you did. It, it's insane. Why do we do these things? By the way, the chat room right now is very funny. <laughs> well, that's unusual. Yeah, no, they're very funny about uh, the ultimate podcast device being able to survive at Asiana landing at SFO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. All right. Um, so we had, uh, where had we, we done Chris Taylor? <laughs> and by the way, the, the, the one guy who it turns out that, that, you know, the intern's name, who's it turns out that with the joke of us, who's Chinese. No. Yeah. Some young guy. Ah, in the morning. You should have gotten to it quicker. Uh-huh. Just hammer it in. I right forgot there. all about it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a joke I worked on last night. <laughs> Peter McConnell. You should have coordinated it with me. So we really could have made it suck. <laughs> Peter McConnell again, two hundred two dollars and twenty cents in Suzhou, China. Greetings from Suzhou, China. Hey, eighty eight, eighty eight for June plus ninety nine, ninety nine for July plus thirteen, thirty three for the magic number two hundred two point two nice. toward my knighthood. Nice, two nice. twenty twenty two is coincidentally also the year when, after five years of worldwide drone warfare, the meta preppers and hoarders shall inherit the bombed out, charred remains of the planet. And begin constructing a utopian society where ham radio is used as a primary means of communication. <laughs> yeah. Chin up, gentlemen. Summer donations may be slow, but you can always look forward to 2022 when your ship finally comes in. Also, I haven't been able to determine exactly when to observe this holiday, but National Macaroni and Cheese Day Day falls either on the 7th or the 14th. We've talked about that. Better late than never, I say. So when can we hear the jingles and observation of this glorious day? As always, thanks for the stellar deconstruction. The last shows have been outstanding. Mm-hmm. Ed, thank uh, you very the, much, Peter. Thank you very much, Peter. <clears throat> and Sujo is the uh, is the Venice one of, of course, there's a million of these places. <laughs> it's, is it the it's Paris the of Venice China? Of China. <laughs> it's, yes. the, it's the Venice of China. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Le Boutillier. Le Boutillier. Uh, Le in Boutillier. His, in Hesperia, California, $200. Le Boutillier. Uh, here's a little something from beautiful Hesperia Nuts, California, land of the dog sized squirrel. Squirrel! Shoot them things. Keep up with the great work. <laughs> Pronounce Ed La Booty. Boutillier. Boutillier. Ed La Boutillier. Okay. Um. The last associate exec for today. Yes, is. If i got to find his note, which obviously moved. There it is. Uh, last associate exec uh, for today's <laughs> show, 530 is Ben C. Parts unknown, $200 is a note. Uh-huh. And he uses Ben C here on the note, so that's why I assume he wants. In the morning to you both, I've been listening to No Agenda during my daily commute for a while now, and I finally decided that it's time that I leave my status of a boner behind and make it Official with a donation. It's not much, but please accept it along with my gratitude for doing such a great digesting, a great job of digesting current events and trying to make <laughs> sense of the lunacy around us. I have us. indigestion from all that digesting. <laughs> if you guys still interested in stories of his, of hysteria in the school system, then I have a contribution to add. So here we go. Oh, oh nice. My mother's a seventh grade teacher in the small Illinois town that I grew up in. She was telling me about the bomb scare in the school a couple months ago. She said that a fellow teacher came into his classroom in the morning and found a note on his desk. After reading it, he called the principal saying he had received a bomb threat. (laughs) The principal called the police, who then instructed the principal to have the teachers examine their rooms to see if they could find anything that looked like a bomb. (laughs) It wasn't until the police arrived sometime later that they moved students to the gym across the street. Standard bomb threat procedure, yes, by the way. Of course. Uh, don't, wait, no, no, no. Aren't they supposed to move them into the corner of the well, room and tell them to cower? I was reading the note. No bomb was found. 
and the students were sent home for the day. Later, my mom saw the note. She said it was a cartoon a fifth grader had drawn showing a Wile E. Coyote-esque bomb blowing up with a stick figure's arms and legs flying everywhere. Being a fifth grade boy myself at one time, I was not surprised by all of it. What's more, the janitor found it on the floor the night before and without looking at it, (laughs) casually threw it on the teacher's desk because he was too lazy to throw it in the trash. (laughs) Either my mother nor I could believe how stupid the whole situation was. That's great. (laughs) Thank you, Ben. I think the the standard procedure for bomb threats should be sit in the corner and cower just in case it blows up. Apparently on the East Coast. (laughs) So I want to thank all Uh, these uh, executive producers and associate executive producers for Show 530. We really appreciate the help. And go to noagendanation.com, noagendashow.com. Click on the donate button or go to dvorak.org slash NA or channel dvorak dot com slash n a and that those are your donation page dvork dot org slash n a thanks I, I do have uh, two quick pr mentions i'd like to throw in here one is from uh, our producer in uh, new mexico jeffrey tuhig and he has made up he sent me one uh those uh bracelets you know the rubber band bracelets you know the kind that you have like the the yeah yeah the ones that uh, were popularized by the the the, the, f- the uh bicycle guy <laughs> yeah yes lance the bicycle guy uh yeah. and, and they're really cool they, they're gray and it says don't drone me bro oh cool and it has no agenda com. and uh, nice. i i think he's gonna i'm not quite sure what he's gonna do but he has some scheme and he's gonna scheme. he's like hey check these out i have a scheme let me see hey, send me one i'll wear it yeah, yeah of course now mickey actually is mickey not only wears it she puts it on water bottles and here it is you have the first batch of bracelets. I would like to see these on some members of Congress. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he has a scheme. Well, you know, John John F. Carey wears all kinds of bracelets. He's got all kinds of stuff on his right arm. So, you know, you know what? Our producers never cease to amaze me. So I'm I'm not I'm not going to say that that can't happen. Uh, then we have a note here from uh, Al Franken. Yeah. Uh, Michael Johnson, uh, in the morning, Adam, I heard you and John talking about satellites picking up microwave signals given off, given off by towers from space. He says it's very... Who is this again? Michael Johnson. You're not going to read this guy's note. You haven't seen this guy's note. This is not... This is You haven't seen this guy's note, so what are it's you talking about? It's a different about? note than the one that he's... You, ha- you have not... going to get you the Motorola equipment? No. Oh, okay, go on. Am I going to get Motorola equipment? <laughs> no. Go on. No. Uh, uh, this is, okay, so talking about the satellites picking up microwave signals given off by, that would be horrorish of me, John. What are you talking about? No, no, this is, this is a PR segment. Ah. It's very doable. In fact, you as a ham can try a similar experiment communicating with your own spacecraft in space if you back the pocket spacecraft mission to moon Kickstarter. <laughs> so this guy. He What's has, the name of it? It's the Pocket Spacecraft Mission to the Moon. Pocket? <laughs> it's great. And this, he's got a, he's he's got got a, a Kickstarter? Yeah, no, he's, and he's, he's raising money. I think he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna complete. So, he's so, not going to complete. Yes, he is. Yeah, I think he is. So the idea is they have these little thin wafers, and it's going to go up in a, in a commercial rocket, and the sat- it shoots out, and then the wafers are going to poop out. And he says that we could actually uh, have a no-agenda space saucer. That we could all track then uh, on the web. Ooh, yeah, I, I think this is a good idea. <laughs> I like this a lot. And so I said, this is without a doubt the most shameless plug of the day. Yeah, it's pretty shameless. But this it was so he needs two hundred ninety thousand pounds. It's a lot of money. Yeah, British. That, yeah. So that's like uh, through lots. And he's got 33 so far, and he's got 236 backers. Yeah. And he's a big money guy. Yeah, he, guy he needs with. a big guy. To, call like, Allen. Call Elon Musk. Elon Musk Elon Musk would want to run it up in one of his planes. Yeah, well, that's fine. One of his rockets. Yeah, Elon Musk, you know, don't get me started on that guy. Anyway, thank you all so very much. Uh, reminder that we do this twice a week. Uh, we'll be here on Thursday once again with a live show, uh, hopefully with live audio. That all depends on what happens. And uh, to support the program with your uh, kind and generous donations. Dvorak.org slash N-A. And, of course, we always need you to go out there and propagate our formula. Our formula is this. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. Shut up, Slave. Shut up, Slave.
I'm, I'm a little, I don't know if I should be upset or not that you actually thought I would, like, do something to get free stuff and promote it on the show. <laughs> Do you, do you really? I would never do anything like that. Yeah, you would. But do you think I would do that? That's really that. I mean, I certainly wouldn't do it just for myself. I mean, I'd sli- make sure you'd be on the same game. I try to get you stuff all the time. Oh. Okay. Sorry. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You know how, you know how much free stuff I've gotten recently? No. Nothing. Zip. <laughs> I'm blackballed. <laughs> Maybe it's because you take the junkets for for car companies and then don't blog about it. Maybe, by the way, outstanding um, PC Magazine article. Which one? The one about you can't trust Microsoft. Oh yeah, hilarious. Build enough to do that one. Hilarious. And and you think so you think it's, what do you think of the thesis? Well, there's a couple things, um, and this is based upon uh, the latest article from Glenn Greenwald, who I have no respect for. Um, you can't. You You're cannot. Losing respect by the day. Yeah, you cannot. You, know, you cannot I'm publish having... this without publishing the source material. This. I mean, he could be talking out of his ass. And his. And what? And if you look at his Twitter feed, which I've kind of is a little obsession for me now. He's like, what if you don't? If you don't trust us, you know that we have the documents. Then how could you even trust what we posted? Like, what are you six? Okay, we need to talk about this then. <laughs> six, seven. No, I think he's six, and Twitter is the playground of the, of of the universe. Well, I'm not going to argue that. So there's a couple of things. I got a couple of clips you might as well play because it still brings up the bull crap that we've debunked with the actual source material, which is annoying because nobody else seems to care except this show. And I'm talking about the fake uh, landing of the <laughs> Bolivian. Guy don't make me play. Don't make me play it again, please. People, no, I'm not going to play no. that. I don't even have it on the clip list. If you lo- if you notice, yeah. No, but let's it. listen to uh, old Glenn on. You know, he somehow ended. You know, he's on everything. He's just on everything, and now he sounds like the. You know what? He sounds like the spokeshole. Yes. For Snowden. Yes. Oh, oh. So he's like the Snowden. <laughs> he's like Carney for Snowden. And <laughs> yeah. so he's now on this Chris Hayes. You ever watch this guy? The guy uh, with, the gl- with the glasses? Yeah. Yeah. He, who's a fast talker. He's obviously yeah. been trained to how to speak by Rachel Maddow, which means talk as fast as you can. I think, I think Chris, I think he is Rachel Maddow. Doesn't she go back and change and become him? I, I wouldn't be surprised, but except for the fact that, that this Chris Hayes is married that, and there's no conflict of interest here, but he was married to the, or he still is married to this woman who was with the Obama administration as a, as a counsel <laughs> no. for, for for Barack no. himself until last month. No. Yes. No. You say it ain't so. So we have no. uh, Greenwald. The first clip, which has the, the bogus crap in it, Greenwald on. On R. M. the Rachel Maddow clone show is what I called it. Issues for the Guardian newspaper. Glenn broke the Edward Snowden story in the Guardian. Glenn, my first question to you is: Why do you think after this holding pattern, after these long weeks where we hadn't seen Edward Snowden, why did today happen? The reason is because his ability to get to the countries where he's seeking asylum and hopes to receive asylum has been thwarted by the willingness of the United States government physically to block him from being able to get there. They revoked his passport, which prevents him from traveling. They Wrong! To the- <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. Let's just stop for one second. Uh, we have uh, read directly from the State Department's website. It does not prevent you from traveling whatsoever. The only thing it does is when you re-enter the United States, you'll have a big flag in the computer, which means you'll be taken aside and you will not be permitted uh, the entry into the country as a given. That's all. You will, and you have your passport taken away. Yes, but it, it's it explicitly. It says two things. Uh, explicit, implicitly, explicitly says one. No one's passport can be revoked if their whereabouts is unknown. It specifically says that. Yes. And two, it says th- it's not a problem to travel on a revoked uh, passport because it's not everyone is tied into the American Gestapo. So that's wrong, so Glenn Greenwald. Wrong. 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 Hold on. Glenn, Glenn. Wrong. World that they will physically impede an airplane, which they did with the jet carrying the Bolivian president. That's okay, wrong. wrong, wrong. No, he he asked to land with the bull cr- lies. with the bull crap excuse that he couldn't read his fuel gauges on the forty seven million dollar Falcon, over. the forty seven million dollar Falcon jet. And oh, and it's funny, you know, um, 
I was uh, talking to a Russian friend uh, the other day, okay. and and I and uh, and uh, he left Saint Petersburg when he was eight, and you know, and, and we we're just talking and stuff, and I said, "Oh, interesting." So, um, did you go to Germany for asylum or Poland? He said, "No." Do you know what the typical route is for most people leaving Russia to get into Europe to ask for asylum? Austria. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's very weird. That's odd. Right? Yeah. They mistakenly Funny. thought, how do Edward Snowden on it? And they put pressure on all the countries that could be possible refueling uh, stops in order for him to get there. And that's why the ACLU and Amnesty are both warning that what the Obama administration is doing is threatening. Now, now, hold on a second. Because this is what I, I dug into this for a second. Let me just go back. What were the organizations he said? Let's just listen again. That's why the ACLU and Amnesty are both warning. The ACLU and he says Amnesty. Yeah, just Amnesty. Just Amnesty. And I want to talk about this bull crap in a minute. That what the Obama administration is doing is threatening um, this very well-recognized right uh, of asylum. There's simply no way for him to get out at the moment, and that's why he sought the help of these human rights organizations. So one concern I think a lot of people <laughs> watching this have, and I... I <laughs> one concern I have... I will actually count myself among them as someone who is happy to know the things I know because of Edward Snowden, happy to have the information, think that information is, is crucial. What? If you're happy and you're Snowden... Clap your hands. What was he saying? And now I, he talks too fast. And then yeah. now he's going to do take the Obama. So he has to because he's, yeah, he's MSNBC. His wife works yeah. for Obama or dad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Information. Think that's information is crucial. And we'll talk about the Microsoft story in a second. Is that he has now been. It's unclear to me with how much autonomy this man could possibly be acting. I mean, Ooh. we know the nature of Vladimir Putin. We know the nature of the Russian state at this moment. And in fact, any state, if the Russian version of Edward Snowden showed up at the Miami International Airport, the CIA would be there the next day. So it doesn't seem ridiculous to me to s assume at this point that those 10,000 files that he has with him, that he brought to you to screen with rigor and clarity, are now in the hands, conceivably, of Russian intelligence. And that doesn't seem like the best way for this to have gone. Oh. But they, these people wa read too many books. Yeah, let's, let's go. Let's go over this uh, the, the thing we brought this up on the show before. I just want to mention again before you go into this other analysis, which is does does anybody honestly believe that uh, the Russians don't have all this stuff already? All this information that they've been running Prism or, and all or, and these or, slides. Or John. And by the way, I want to ask you something about this because they released some more slides. Yeah. No, they didn't. Yeah, here's the question. Who are these slides for? Who was supposed to be viewing this slideshow? These are sales. Yeah, show, these so. are the way I see it. Uh, these are partially sales job. Totally. The, the, and they're bragging. Oh, look what we've got all these guys in our pocket. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a bunch of yeah. bragging slides. Yeah. Look what we did. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, it's like uh, office party slides. Yeah, you know, uh, we have a, f uh, a Friday drink, and we'll talk about our accomplishments if before we, we head off for the hey, weekend. Get, get that guy to do a deck for a us. Deck, <laughs> deck. <laughs> do a deck for us. And hey, I do, Bill. I do want to point out um, that uh, the Guardian, uh, by their own admission on the Charlie Rose Show, the editors went to the White House, went to DNI, went to the CIA, went to the NSA, and said, "Here's what we're going to publish. Are there any national security concerns?" And the, and they went, "No, no." So just like right, uh, the Trayvon that. Martin Zimmerman thing, this is all conditioning us. And and I don't know if it's even a grand scheme. Of, well, Brzezinski clearly is behind all of it. But, but I, you know, and Kissinger. Uh, but it seems all to me like a beta test. You know, it's like, can, what are they going to say here? Oh, okay. No, they're okay. Are they going to riot? No, no, okay. You know, it just it, it, that's what it feels no, like. It's to actually me. like you and me about the riots. Yeah. This is going on in one of the one of the offices. No, the public is going to react adversely if they ever found out. Oh, bull crap! I'll bet you a dollar they yeah. don't care. No, no, I think the actual conversation they're having is. I'll bet you Dvorak tries to welch on the bet. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> made that conversation. Let me uh, allow me to uh, interlude in your three clips. <laughs> With a little backgrounder on what actually happened, because these are the things that uh, that interest me, and I think most No Agenda producers are are getting used to, to finding out this information for themselves. So here's Spokeshall Carney. We have communicated it to a variety of countries, including Russia, uh, and 
So it's no different than it was. And, and I would simply say that providing a propaganda platform for Mr. Snowden. Very nice. Listen to the words now. Providing a propaganda platform. And I agree. I mean, what I mean, to ask for asylum is one thing. To do a press conference in the airport? Okay. Uh, runs counter to the Russian government's uh, previous declarations of Russia's neutrality and that they have... Uh, and that they have no control over his presence in the airport. It's also incompatible with Russian assurances that uh, they do not want uh, Mr. Snowden to further damage U.S. interests. But having said that... Wait for it. Uh, you know, our position also remains that we don't believe this should and we don't want it to uh, do harm to our important relationship with Russia, and we continue to discuss with Russia uh, our strongly held view that there is uh, absolute legal justification for him to be expelled uh, expelled uh, for him to be returned to the United States uh, to face the charges that have been brought against him for the unauthorized leaking of classified information okay I just want you to know that there is authorized leaking and unauthorized leaking apparently because that's what the spokes hole is saying right there unauthorized leaking so we see Snowden uh, doing a press conference uh, at the Moscow airport. That's very airport. interesting you caught that. Oh, yeah. I, I just wanted to see if you're awake. So so he said unauthorized leaking. So, yes. this, so that implies authorized leaking. Yes. Which that, is well, the it, stuff that the Obama my book, administration has yes. been doing consistently. Yes, yes, here it is. Charges that have been brought against <clears throat> him for the unauthorized leaking of classified information. <laughs> unauthorized leaking. So who was with uh, our friend Snowden there at the airport? Well, two women. I would yep. say, by the way, hotties. Hotties, yeah. yeah, Sarah Harrison. We've been tracking her. Sarah Harrison, she is the woman from WikiLeaks. She, <clears throat> as far as we know, uh, is probably Julian Assange's lover, Assange. Uh, the one that I liked the most, though, was the um, the one on the right, Tanya Lakshina. And she is from one of my favorite organizations, Human Rights Watch, which is a complete shill front. Complete in fact, it's it's a front. The um, it, and when I say front, I mean for the CIA. <clears throat> uh, it was the Human Rights Watch uh, organization that actually approved of the CIA secret renditions. And I put a couple links in the show notes so you can go uh, back and look at that. Uh, even though uh, one of the articles I had to get from uh, the archive dot org because it had been scrubbed uh, from the interwebs. Uh, but it, it, it literally quite uh, clearly says that uh, Human Rights Watch uh, said, well, you know, at least uh, we know that these guys are going, you know, to a place that is, you know, that we're that we're managing and uh, not some uh, godforsaken hole. So they're all on board with anything the CIA does. And now this now this is uh, falls under the amnesty banner, just plain old amnesty. You can just say whatever you do want. And no one questions this. No one questions. Well, who are these women and why are they there? And why are they there with you? And who was backing this? And go look at Human Human Rights Watch. Great name. Great name. But it's a front. And she runs the Moscow office. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. It's getting pretty funny. It, well, it's, it's hilarious to me. But, you know, it's... It, it's it, I just... No wonder people come to us to listen. No wonder. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how can you? I know that people hear these things, and it registers. I mean, all human beings, your brains are really doing work, and they're really smart. And and I know that maybe you didn't hear this particular clip, but if your brain heard the clip unauthorized leaking, your brain is going, "Hey, what's going on here?" And it tickles at you for a while, you know, and then and it takes yeah, a while. Yeah, then it finally goes away. Yeah, <laughs> but it does bother you. And the, but if yeah. you got this show, our Thank show, you. yeah. And all we do is we we take and we poke it. Yeah. Say, hey, you, there was a reason that you were acting. That you, that you felt were acting didn't weird. Feel right. Yeah. Here's the reason. <laughs> yeah. This is why. Exactly. And then you go, oh exactly. my God, they're trying to fool me. Yeah. Oh, here's a, the Human Rights Watch page. H R W. I I was waiting for you. And to the get front to it. thing, they got a uh, the flash pop up of the two women. <laughs> yeah, sitting there with Snowden in the middle, yeah. looking over at her notes. Yeah, <laughs> which I believe is the, is that blue card. Wait, let me see. That Letterman uses. <laughs> what are you going to talk about next? I don't know. Let's see. What do we have on the agenda? 
She's looking at an agenda. You got a flash pop up? I don't have a pop up. What did you get? What did you get? That I got from? a pop up. Says Human Rights Watch meets with Snowden. Sign up for breaking news here. And is it? Oh, it, it popped up for me now too. There we go. There you go. It's copyright 2013 by Tanya Lokshina. Human Rights Watch. Yeah. Now well, she didn't take this picture. But, Why is she taking the copyright? But look at the girl in the background. Look at Sarah. She's hot, man. Come on. Come on. And she came from nowhere. She was an intern. She's probably the one who wrote those names on the uh, Asiana flight pilots list. I I, uh, I looked her up actually for you. Uh, hold on a second. Let me tell you. Hey, look at this. Did you see this Tanya Lokshina? Is that the is that the same one? Yeah, it looks completely different, doesn't she? She's just a redhead. This is typical of a spy. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Uh, late 2009, Harrison was an eager 27-year-old applying for an unpaid internship, a graduate of a prestigious boarding school with ambitions to become a journalist. Harrison had no prior experience, but uh, McHayden said he saw a spark that led him to bring her on board. Yeah, a spark between his legs, probably. Hey, is this how it goes? Hey, John, and we've done this. Uh, what do you think of that girl? Should we hire her? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, are you kidding me? That'll <laughs> brighten up everyone's day. And I'm saying, Actually, in an office environment, you, it, it does. Of course, it does. But it's you been can studied. But you can never admit this because you go to jail. Well, it, in California, especially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Harrison had no prior experience, but McFadden said he saw the spark to bring her on board, a break that would set her on the path to meet Assange, and eventually bring her into the whistleblower website's inner circle. Oh, brother. It was an intelligent choice to send her to Snowden, McFadden said. She's smart, determined, and fully believes in the moral principle of shedding light. This is something she has strong feelings about. shedding her clothes? <laughs> hey Squirrel! After being recommended by McFadden, Harrison began working with WikiLeaks in August 2010 on the internal vetting of confidential U.S. documents supplied by Army Private First Class Bradley Manning, which the site later released. No, they gave it to newspapers. At some point that year, according to two people with direct knowledge of the situation who spoke on the condition of anonymity, wow, it's the WikiLeakers inside the leakers, wow, Harrison and Assange became intimately involved. Uh -huh. they, they cautioned that the relationship was not Harrison's prime motivation in championing the WikiLeaks cause. Uh -huh. <laughs> she is firmly committed to what WikiLeaks is trying to do. She believes 100% in the mission, one of the people said. Any suggestion her relationship with Julian is what has compelled her to do the things she has done would be totally wrong assumption. Well, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it's kind of funny. Yeah. You, you deserve to be scrutinized when you're screwing with the boss. No, no doubt. You get that. It would that. seem so. Yeah. Uh, so she gets the, the 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 gig. She gets the gig to go to Moscow. It's all funny. And remember when our president said, "Hey, I'm not going to call Putin over this." We called Putin this week because he, you know, look at what's happening. There's, 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 it, so this is all very fun and and fun and games. And you hear Carney talking about, well, you know, we've got long standing relationship. You know, want, we don't really want to mess that up. But let's just look at the reality of the situation. I put this in the show notes. If you you can Google it. If you look at the uh, the Joint C 2013 uh, drill, which is the Chinese and Russian naval exercise, this thing was huge. Did you yeah, did you see the picture? I mean, oh, I mean, and they've got you know they're firing live rounds. They've got jets. They've got drones. They've got battleships. I mean, this, this is not not minor what went on here. But along with that, and we know that um, uh, there was a the, the Russians and the Chinese uh, did a big deal for oil. Gazprom just got all the Kyrgyzstan um, uh, oil and gas. Kyrgyzstan gas. I'm sorry. For one dollar. <laughs> hey, I could have been a buck fifty. <laughs> for one, now if you look at the map, go ahead, John. <clears throat> Let's do this together because it's kind of fun. Everybody listening on the stream, go to uh, maps.google.com. No, that's the um, the easiest one, and uh, type in Kyrgyzstan, which is K Y R G Y Z Stan. K Y, how'd you get K Y R? K Y jelly, K Y R G Y Z Stan. Okay. Right. <clears throat> now this is now normally we'd be looking 
to the just left, north, just north of Taj- Tajikistan. Right. What, and, and what uh, is what is to the to the south, the east there? It's China, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. can't get a shorter route into China. Well, it is China. Yes. Yeah, you just step across the border. You're in China. You're in China. Uh, so this is, you know, and China is, of course, this is what it's always been about. This is what the the trans uh, the the Tappy pipeline is about. You know, to go from Iraq, Iran, uh, Afghanistan, pa- Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, then through uh, what is in between uh, uh, Burma. This has got to be a in, cool in, place go, in China. This is like north of Tibet. This has got to be like one of the more interesting places to wander. I'll, I'll, I'll bet you up there. I'll bet you they've got one of those Star Wars uh, or Star Trek board, uh, bars. You know, where the they had Star the, Trek, yeah. Where they had all the yeah, crazy well, that's what fashioned after. Yeah, all those, yeah, all those crazy like crazy hats and chicks with six breasts and stuff. I'm telling you, that's what it's like up there. So, this is the real. This is the real deal. This is what really matters. None of this other stuff. It doesn't matter one bit. This is the real deal because, you know, the Pentagon is our natural resource extraction unit of the elites of the United States of Gitmo Nation and of Britain and France and, you know, all the, all, all the, all the companies that, uh, that need that stuff to uh, enslave us. And I think, I have to say, we're on the losing end right now. We're not doing, our president, if you want to be mad he's, at anything, yeah, he's doing a crappy job. He's doing a really, really bad job, and he's out golfing. You know, this does not show confidence. You can't. We got our our president, our guys out golfing, and and the other guys got a shirt off, hanging out with tigers. Right, and they got snowed in doing press conferences in the yeah. Moscow airport, and they can't do anything with, about it with hot chicks. And they, those two chicks, obviously bodyguards. <laughs> yes, handler bodyguards. Obviously, handler bodyguards. Look at the arms on that girl. Yeah, well, he probably knows some moves. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's the real game. And that's what is being obfuscated by all this other stuff. But I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. All right, well, let's play clip two as we ah, go yes. along the way with, the, uh, with Glenn Greenwald on the... Uh... Can I ask you a question? Yes. At this point, uh, do you feel that Glenn... <laughs> Glenn Greenwald? Glenn Greenwald. Glenn <laughs> Greenwald. Ren, do you think that Ren is uh, <clears throat> is compromised? You know, I actually don't think he's compromised. I think he's, he's dumb. He's just kind of gone off the rails on his own. Do you think that? Well, here's a possibility. Perhaps okay. he's he's just really gotten caught up in his fifteen minutes. Well, he's not. He's definitely pushing his luck with the fifteen <laughs> minutes. He's way over time. <laughs> hey, buddy, get off the stage. <laughs> I think He's like you, the guy who comes up to do five <laughs> minutes on a stand-up open mic, and he won't get off the stage. Gren, Gren Greenwald, you're five minutes up. All right, can we go with clip two? Yeah. I think what you just described is is exactly what you called it, which is an assumption. And I would add it's a very speculative assumption, one for which there's no evidence, and I think that runs counter to the evidence that we know. Remember, this is a person who threw away his entire life, as he said in the beginning of that statement that you just played. Threw away his entire life? Seems to be alive if you ask me. Oh, I think he's talking about his... His 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 like this one room apartment, you know, working for uh, for uh, one of these agencies as a contractor with no health benefits and uh, a girlfriend that he apparently didn't. I, I don't know. I'm thinking his life got an upgrade. If you ask. Oh me. yeah, no, he's big. He's a big star now. Yeah. He doesn't get killed. Yeah. <laughs> he. Uh, had a girlfriend, a longtime girlfriend, a family who loves him. I get emails from them all the time asking me to pass on best wishes and love to him. Wait a minute. What is yeah, this? Did you notice that too, huh? Yeah. What is he now? The goat? He's just he's like one of these criminal attorneys that keeps passing messages back and forth between the mob and the guy that's indicted. And and remember, we have Bruce Fine, the lawyer, lurking in the background. He. Uh, it's about time for him to make another appearance. If you play that thing again, I believe there's code in there. Let me check it out. Hold on. Let me roll it back a few. He uh, had a girlfriend, a longtime girlfriend, a family who loves him. I get emails from them all the time asking me to pass on best wishes and love to him. Yeah. Uh, it, your, it, the message is your family loves you, which is code for, you know, the family. Hello. The family, John. CIA. Yeah, no, the, I'm the, getting the, it. The, fam- yeah, the family loves funny, you. Yeah. The f- family loves you. Don't you think? It could be. It could be just that simple. 
Um, he had a very stable career, a lucrative job, and he threw it away because he wanted not to destroy the United States or harm the United States, which he could easily have done by selling the information, but to provoke a debate. And he was willing to sacrifice all of his interest, including his freedom, in order to have that. So the idea that he would then suddenly start turning over secrets to Russia or China, which he could have done early on and, right. and gotten a lot of money for it. Um, what? <laughs> gotten a lot of money. I mean, Gren, Gren, really? Ren Greenwald, <laughs> what book are you reading? Is it He's called? Obviously reading too much La Carre. What is so La Carre? Hold on, reference I don't understand. One of those spy novelists. Oh, I thought it was like the Lars Erickson guy or whatever. The, the so, trilogy. so, so he's like now he sounds exactly like the publicist, publicist for the guy, right? If you're yeah. talking, to, no, she can't talk right now. Let me. She, she's <laughs> she's she's just recuperating from her. She sprained her ankle in a basketball game. Yes, and let me tell you, I mean seriously, she could be doing anything she wants right now. But no, she decided to give it all up for you, for your entertainment people. So please back off a little bit. Are we talking so, Lady Gaga or uh, I have another minute on this thing? Can we, can we continue? Yeah, absolutely. I love Play. it. I mean, I find the whole thing. No, I love it. I love it. It's great. This is condensed. This is great. It's it very impossible to me, especially but, since. Be, 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 but, I, but, but I'm Rachel Maddow. Be, 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 be. And, right. and gotten a lot of money for it um, is, is but, very impossible if, to me, especially but, since I've been in contact with him over the past week. And, and he's very clear about the fact that he's free to leave Russia at any time, that the only barrier in his way is the United States. And you think that's true? You do not think that he I mean, has he talked to you about I mean, I'm not I'm not saying this about who, the nature of Edward Snowden. I'm talking about the nature of the Russian state and Vladimir Putin, who spent his whole life in the KGB and like, you know, doesn't necessarily play patty cake when this stuff is on the table. So you're saying that they what? What is this reference? I have no idea. Hello, He's gone off the rails. Hello, 1950. We'd like our analogy back. He just has not had interactions with Russian intelligence. I think there's. I think there's a lot of different factors. You know, and and when I hear this, and we have to be so careful because you get caught up in easy terms like amnesty is all over it. They're taking care of like amnesty, like some magical organization from God that comes down and has no financial interest or backing from anybody, you know, or human rights watch. Oh yes. Oh, are my human rights. And now it's Russian intelligence. What do you know about Russian intelligence? You idiot. I'd play besides the fact that the Russian government would like to get this hand, their hands on this information. Um, it's the same thing with China. You know, the New York times basically made up the claim, yes. uh, which they phrased in terms of this might, have happened yes. that the Chinese government drained his laptop, something <laughs> right. that he insists didn't happen, that and all the things I saw when I was in Hong Kong with him simply didn't happen, because there's a lot of different considerations that the Chinese had, including wanting him gone so that they didn't complicate the relationship Russia, with the world. And Russia I think would like to the see Russians him gone as well. As well. Oh. You can't even you, you no. can't no. get a word in. So here's another thing that's kind of interesting. If the Russians wanted to um, grab... So if you listen to the grant, this the part one, you heard it, and I think he indicates it again. Greenwald, supposedly, at least the way he s seems to tell the story, has all this stuff. Yeah, he should be arrested on the spot. He should either be arrested on the spot or that the right. Why would the Russians want to go through to the Snowden guy? It, Greenwald's hanging out in Brazil, which is wide open. If you want to just go over to somebody's building and club them and then take <laughs> their stuff. <laughs> it would be a lot easier to me to get to club Glenn Greenwald, leave him in a pool of blood, and steal his material, which is the same thing, supposedly. Well, I don't believe any of this. No. And perhaps it's all the whole I, – I, I'm going to go back to my original premise. Glenn Greenwald and the Freedom of the Press Foundation and all these people and uh, Lenny Rufenstahl, Lori Poitras, and, and the, the tour guy and WikiLeaks – it's all a big show. Half of them have no idea what they're doing. They're just so horny to get clearance or some other kind of perceived benefit. Because that's how it works in a police state. It's like, oh, I have clearance now. Oh, yes, I'm special. Or I get invited to some thing, you know, where I can meet a politician or whatever. So half of them are just ignorant, you know, people because people get um, manipulated all the time. But there are a few. Uh, John Perry Barlow, I'm looking at you, who who, who know the score and are, are in there handling the situation and it's a setup to me this you're so right 
If this guy has all this documentation, then yeah, and if and if Russia or China wants it, just go down there like, hey, hey, Glenn Greenwald, I clip you. <clears throat> you know, very simple. Hey, Glenn, what's that? Is that yeah, your laptop? Yeah, how, oh, how, oh. how? Let me take the zip how, drive. How do you think? And this, you know, how do you think Greenwald would react to a forty-five pushed up against his temple? And somebody's saying, we want that stuff that uh, Snowden gave yeah, you. Yeah. And what's Greenwald going to do? Say no. Yeah, or how about, why don't You're you? You're going to have to shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> or you can go right to the Washington Post. They apparently have the documents. Yeah. So or why don't we go, why don't we go to the monthly meeting of the Freedom for the Press, the Press Foundation? They all seem to have it. They all seem to, Zenny Jardin, let's go grab her. She probably has it. Sounds like everyone has a copy. Except us. Except the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, the Russian, Chinese and the and Russian. The Russian intelligence. They no got idea. No, and, and it's this simplicity. This is, thank you, John. This is exactly the simplicity that you have to take it to for, for everyone to understand what kind of BS this really is. It is, it is total bull crap. Total. It's all, it's like, a, it's kind of like the Zimmerman trial. You know, if we had sat down to write it, we would have probably come up with something similar. You know, with the, you know, it's got all, it's, it's got everything in there. Remember, we had court TV and for a reason. This is what people want. This is, this is, you know, this is, it, it hits all of our buttons. We've been conditioned to like this. We really do. It's beautiful. And the sad thing is that we have a large contingent of people who are living online and who have grown up online and, um, and work in, uh, in technology and understand much better how this works than than uh, than older uh, than an older generation, and they're all in on the he's my hero. But you're it's a false prophet. You see, I'm not arguing about any of that. Yeah. We have the third clip we can listen. Yeah, to I'd love to. to. Just I'd love find to. the final listen, and it, it, this is all kind of semi scripted because it ends right on time when just the time for the commercial break. And we're out of here. Quickly, there was a scoop you had yesterday about the NSA and Microsoft working together. What do you think the significance of it? I read it, and it seemed to me that the, the most charitable interpretation possible is that they are creating the technical capability to be able to, in the future, execute lawful kind of searches for items they want. What do you think is worrisome about that scoop? The, scoop. the Silicon Valley companies have continuously said that they only do the bare minimum the law requires to work with the NSA. And what this shows is this constant collaboration and collusion on the part of Microsoft to build systems to allow all sorts of access to Skype, to Outlook, to these cloud systems, way beyond what the law requires. And the idea that they need a warrant in each individual case is untrue. They only need a warrant when they're targeting American citizens, not when they're right. scooping up all kinds of communications, right. including ones right. involving Americans. Glenn Greenwald from The Guardian, thanks so much. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, let me let me say a couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, I looked for a clip. I could not find any clip of this because uh, it was in an Argentinian newspaper. Uh, Glenn Greenwald's latest, which of course is being propagated now by uh, Reuters predominantly, uh, is here we go. Guardian journalist Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald said in an interview published Saturday that the U.S. should be quote on its knees begging that nothing bad happens to NSA leaker Edward Snowden because the information that would then be revealed would be the country's worst nightmare. Okay? Yeah. So now these, these are words... And by the way, yeah, go on, because so, okay. I'm going to... Uh, well, go ahead. This. No, go ahead. Say it. Say it. Well, I'm just saying, this just seems like an overt threat uh, f from Glenn Greenwald. Who has, and why would has, he know has been this? And this, for me, John... This discredits him as an unbiased journalist. You, this is not how a journalist works. No, you're not I supposed agree with to. Hundred percent. That's bull. This is to, this is something I would say. If that's right, <laughs> and if that, and if if all that is case in true, point, <laughs> why doesn't he turn it into a story, not just some through some interview? He the stories of Stockton is all about Glenn Greenwald being interviewed. Well, Thank you know, you. they're going. He's exactly. going to blow it into WikiLeaks if yeah. anything happens. If he gets killed. It's going to be, it's got a dead man switch yeah. working for him. <laughs> yeah. He's got copies all around the world. Exactly. Okay, so what what are the results here? Now, and by the way, let's, 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 re, let's back up the truck for a second and beep, re remind beep, people what beep, you said beep, earlier, beep, which is that if you took this entire package and, sh and they showed it to the intelligence agencies and they said, we got no problem, man. how does this even make sense, what you just said? Okay. In other words, yeah, how does it's it make sense that it's going to destroy the country? Yes. <laughs> Worst nightmare. 
It's all contradictory. But what do we have now? We have the following. We have a media shield law being set up, uh, which is uh, partially because of well, it's all it's very related. It's all in it's all interrelated because we have the spying on journalists, and we now we know how they do it, and we have all the information, so called information, um, and you know. So this is all. Thank you, thank you very much, Mister Snowden. Uh, so we have a media shield law coming, which is is literally meant to obfuscate all kinds of stuff under the banner of national security rights. Right. We have the Silicon Valley companies are now I mean, because Glenn Glen Glenn, Glenn Greenwald is a hitman. He with his piece where he he accuses Microsoft of uh, aiding and abetting and being and being a fascist, a fascist organization with the government. This is a direct accusation by him, not using the fascist word, but the definition of what he described is fascism. Uh, by accusing them without showing any source documentation, without showing the document. So he says he has it from an internal NSA bulletin board, but he can't show that or he won't well, he show it. Talking about it. Why doesn't he show it? Well, be, well because that makes no sense. But the, it's so, like uh, Eugene McCarthy or uh, not Eugene, but uh, Mac the McCarthy character in the 50s. Uh, holding the blank sheets of paper up, talking about all the communists that are in the government. But let me show you how this works, because you. And I, I've known you long enough that you're. That I know that you're not in uh, in the cabal, because man, you would definitely have better clothes. Hey, <laughs> you're not in the cabal. But what happens is, Gren Greenwald uh, threatens Microsoft by saying, "You guys are complicit. You are already doing this. You know, Skype. You, it's all in there. Everything. You're letting them in. You suck. You're horrible." And what happens? You get true journalists like John C. Dvorak writing an article saying, "Why would you trust Microsoft? You should throw them out." So now Microsoft, believe me, there's talk going on. They're like, "Okay, what do you want us to do? We give up." This is how the government. Hey, did, uh, you, the before go you finish that thought, uh, the first thing I thought of when I heard this thing was. How much in the way of donations did Microsoft give to the Obama campaign? Nothing. They Boom. They there it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you sound like a rapper. Um, so that's part of it. That's why they go first. But they're going to do this with everybody. They're going to do it with Google. They're going to do it with Apple. They're going to do it with every single company. It's leverage. It's like, oh, hold on a second. You don't want to play ball? You want, you, uh, you want to try and be transparent? Uh-uh. No way. What you're going to do is you're going to play ball by our rules. Otherwise, we are going to make you look like you're a total a-hole shill, and we're going to make Dvorak write about it. Well, my writing was not about what Greenwald talked about. My writing was the was the simple fact that Microsoft, which is always known to have a back door, uh, but no one's ever proven it. Essentially, they close that door of doubt, and it just doesn't make sense to me. Whether this what Greenwald's doing is is hitman work or not, it just doesn't make sense to me that someone in a foreign government would trust Microsoft, even if it wasn't true. But why would you take a chance? You don't take a chance. I mean, that's what right. The, but but can we can we agree that you probably would not have written this article at this moment and uh, without the Greenwald story? No, I won't agree with that because I actually had planned that article over a week ago. No, but I mean, in this time period, I mean, you know, you, oh, you mean to go the overall green? Uh, yeah, 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 the overall, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, not. Just, yeah. That wouldn't make any sense. Exactly. So I, I think it's fair, and and you're obviously, you know, look, you wouldn't be doing this show if you could make some real money working for these a holes, you know. So you know, so obviously you're not part of it, but that's how it works. That's exactly how it works. You get this going, then and now Microsoft is they're hostage. They are held hostage, no doubt. And Glenn Greenwald is out there, and he's the hitman. And they, they've got the goods on him, too. I don't know what it is they've got on him, because he, he's not doing it right. I mean, we both agree that, you know, the least you, the, the very least, you're like, I got a book, you know, I got something else, you know, I got to promote something. They're not paying him to do all this. Well, I think, they may be writing. I think they got the goods that, on him. They, they may be writing the book as we speak. Possibly, possibly. His book, and then yeah. the book will magically appear. I can assure you as a writer that the kind of attention and, and even the article writing that Greenwald's doing currently and all the attention he's getting and all the conversations that must be going on, if he comes out with a book within 
six months, uh, I would be stunned. I mean, you just, I mean, he, I would be stunned if he'd actually written it because you, there's only so many hours in the day and you can only really write the most any professional can write if there's zero distractions right. is they can maybe hit 10,000 words in a single setting once in a while. Now, there are no yeah, I mean, writers. That this guy, he's barely sleeping. He has no time to write a book right now. He's doing interviews. He, he can't yeah, do anything interview like that. Yeah, whore, yeah for yeah, sure. He's an interview whore. That's not fair. If, if you know, Look, it's I've been on this train. It's great when you get on the on the train and you got the BBC calling you and the New York Times and Charlie Rose. It, you know, it, it it gives you a huge boner. It does. It's great. It's, you know, but Greenwald is, you know, he I don't know. I, I think they got the goods on him. And maybe something about that porn porn site that he's been running or something. I don't know what it is. I don't care. Uh, but they got the goods on him and, and, and maybe this is kind of the payoff. But go back to the original premise that he was working for Salon, which is being paid for by NSA uh, compatriots, namely Adobe. So, you know, he look, we're all compromised in one way or the other. I've, I know I have at least five people handling me. <laughs> you think you wish. No, I'm for sure. For sure. Yeah. I've absolutely. Oh, come on. There's five million people uh, working in intelligence in the United States alone. Uh, that have some kind of clearance, two million of which have top top secret clearance. You're telling me that not not one or two of these emails that I get continuously from some people is not oh, yeah. handler? Oh, yeah. well, Absolutely, yeah, I can name two or three of yes. them myself that yes. that are handling you. Yes, yeah. yeah. You, you want to name somebody, big boy? I don't feel like it, <laughs> but I could. But yeah, I, going I know you could. I can. I think I can. I can name five. That's why I say. But it's okay. Because I often reply and said, you're, the, you're one of the best handlers I have. <laughs> it usually goes quiet for a day or two after I yeah. say that. <laughs> Maybe just get them to donate. Who cares? If they're no, they donate, too. That's the best yeah, part. A good, that's a good, yeah, they're not donating enough. Yeah. Anyway, so the, uh, the, I think uh, I learned a new term. I think uh, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald uh, may have to be careful for uh, Boston breaks. Have you ever heard this term? Nope. It's a beauty. The Boston Breaks. Um, so, well, a producer sent it to me. I, there's a link in the show notes. And the Boston Breaks uh, started in the, uh, uh, I think, the 80s, where uh, the mob in Boston would, you know, like disable breaks or, you know, like, and but not like kill people or try not to kill people, but it's like the daughter of some rival guy. And then they, you know, that have her slam into a light post and have the accelerator or the uh, speedometer look like she was doing 200, you know, stuff like that, which is all completely doable. Oh yeah. More doable today than ever. Yes. Oh, oh, b before I forget, uh, one of our other producers, oh geez, we got so many, um, has been requesting stuff from Los Angeles regarding uh, Michael Hastings. He's requested uh, the coroner's report, which is not yet available. He got a response on that. But he also requested a copy of the 911 tapes. And let's see. So I have uh, the Los Angeles Police Department uh, reply here. I uh, reviewed your request for 911 calls, uh, blah, 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 for the June 18, 2013, 600 block of Highland involving Michael Hastings. And then they go into why they can't release the tapes and why they don't have to release the tapes. But they gave us a call log with a summary uh, of, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven calls, four of which I shall read to you. Uh, June 18th, time of occurrence not provided in call. Uh, factual circumstance, caller reported an accident, car exploded. Caller was transferred to Los Angeles City Fire Department. Uh, uh, number two here, caller reported a huge accident, car had blown up. Caller <laughs> transferred to Los Angeles City Fire Department. Uh, caller reported a traffic collision. He is not involved. There's possibly a fatality because there was a giant explosion. <laughs> now, the thing here's the thing that uh, that is uh, that will somewhere has to be in the report. As a, as a hallmark of the Boston breaks, and Boston breaks can be, you know, it, it's also a term that is used by the mob for, uh, you know, airplane crashes, small airplane typically. But the hallmark of the Boston breaks, no skid marks. Yeah, there's no skid marks in the... No skid marks in the Hastings thing either. Zero. Now, 
I want to go back because I'm actually, even though I'm supposed to be more skeptical than on some of these things. And people, by the way, I, I get some, well, Dvorak's less skeptical about Adam's ideas. And I, I'm going to just bring this up. Yeah, I'm less, Adam has not gone into his water powered cars and his space aliens and a visitation with them and all that stuff where I'm skeptical. He's been doing – he has real source material. What am I supposed to be skeptical about when somebody like just now reads the log and it says explosion, explosion, explosion or blew up? And and the thesis, of course, which I think is a very good one uh, it, and can be easily uh, looked into, which is the idea that a drone hit the car. Now, <coughs> uh, I'm thinking he was doing – he was supposedly doing 100 miles an hour and, and there was a, sh- a picture of him zooming through a uh, – a red light that that's been around the internet. Yeah, by a paparazzi, and the, and he was going the wrong way. Okay, well we'll, we'll forget the, that. <laughs> but whatever the case was, let's assume he was going fast. Yeah, and, and it would be like somebody. Could, what if he got a call saying, "Hey, you know they've got a they've got a drone on you, <laughs> blow you up, get out of there." <laughs> yeah, and so he was trying to get out of the way, and he got and. He, here's what I want: somebody's got to. One of our listeners has got to be in the L.A. area with a Geiger counter. These drones are mm. tipped with. With uranium, depleted uranium. I well, don't know that those we have the, No, those are only the ones we shoot at brown people. White I, people don't get the, I the DU. I would really doubt that we have, like, special drone heads if you're going to kill somebody. Of course. And, we, and most of them don't believe that the, the depleted uranium is that bad of a thing. But hold on. This was not a Predator drone with a hellfire. That would have made quite a hole in the uh, on Highland Avenue. If this was a drone, okay, you're right. It had to be a smaller, yeah, drone. much smaller, much, which but, means but very it's more possible. likely to me to be, have a uh, uranium tipped. Why? But whatever. Why do you I need like the? the uh, you just like the, the whole idea. idea. <laughs> you just like the idea of people getting contaminated and dying later. <laughs> right, especially in Hollywood. <laughs> so I mean, oh, I like the idea. Hold on, hey oh. <laughs> you know, it would be a. Uh, it w- I, I just don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that a drone would take this guy out or take out that train car up north with the exploding crude oil. It just seems too easy to do it that way. Why why plant a bomb in the guy's car? Right. And then remotely trigger it. You know, maybe it could have been that is possible. And, you know, with a phone, you know, you call the guy up and boom, his car blows up. But um, I don't know. It's just the whole thing is fishy, and if they if they think there's no nothing to suspect here, the LAPD's obviously just been told to shut up and stay quiet. Well, we'll see, we'll see. I, I like, I really like that our producers, you know, are asking for this information. They're they're doing FOIA requests. That's pretty. That's that's pretty bold. I I dig that. Yeah. Well, anyway, so this guy was blowed up for some reason. We still don't really know why. Well, we do kind of because we think we think that may be a reason, but I'm not convinced that it's that simple. It could also just be purely a message. Yeah, it may have nothing to do with him. I think a lot of people took. I I listened. I heard it. I'm like, oh, all right, all right. All right. I'm not going to mess with you. You didn't take it that way. No, not really. No. I'm, I'm, I, I listen very closely. Boston Breaks, to me, is like, okay, all right, I get you. I'm all good. Um, let's stay in Boston for one more second. Uh, well, actually, not in Boston. Let's go to the Hill. Uh, three hours of C-SPAN testimony I was very excited about, about the uh, Boston uh, bombing. And, uh, of course, we have our um, Homeland Terrorism Oversight Committee uh, having a look. And it started off like this. Yeah, good evening. The committee is meeting today to continue our series of hearings examining the Boston bombings of April 15, 2013. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. I'm going to, by the way, when I walk into a room, I'm going to do that. You recognize yourself? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hold up a mirror first. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I recognize myself for an opening statement about my entrance. Hold on. I want to thank the witnesses for appearing here today. Uh, This is an open hearing, and today we will vote on convening a closed session tomorrow to receive classified testimony. So already I'm like, oh, really? This is going to be this is going to be bogative. There's going to be nothing good in here if the real testimony is tomorrow. From the Department of Homeland Security and the National Counterterrorism Center. Unfortunately, the FBI has refused to appear. Oh, 
Oh, really now? And continues to refuse this committee's appropriate requests for information and documents <laughs> crucial to our investigation into what happened in Boston. Let me guess. Is that because they can't find the video of the Sarnoff brothers putting the bombs into the trash can? Could that be it, John? The video that everyone knows exists, but no but one no has actually ever seen? seen even though we've seen every other video known to man? Including the governor? That no one has seen this video? Could it be anything like that? Could that have anything to do with it? Possibly? Maybe. Three months ago, there was a terrorist attack in our country. And it is this committee's responsibility to find out how we did not see it coming. What concerns me greatly is that the problem at the heart of preventing the Boston bombings is a failure to share information, that that is being witnessed now in this very room. That's right. There you go. Yay! Yay. And then we have, uh, and this is one of our uh, producers again who caught this, and I, I just found it interesting. Um, you know the guy, uh, Jeff Bauman, the guy who um, apparently ha had uh, his legs blown off? He was in the wheelchair and everything. And Remember that guy? who Everyone yeah. was like, oh, he's, he, he's fake. Well, he's a, it's, his healing process is remarkable. Uh, NBC Nightly News had a piece on him uh, where uh, it's, it's, it's incredible how quickly he is healed. And I, haven't, I was going to ask Miss Mickey because she has some experience about this type of particular wound. Um... Uh, but I, I was actually I was very sick yesterday. I have to tell you about that later. Um, so I didn't get to because uh, it's, it's a weird topic, weird conversation. But this guy, he's healed very, very quickly. He's already uh, uh, using prosthetics uh, to walk around, and uh, they amputated his legs above the knee. Uh, and uh, again, I I just don't know enough about the topic, but I, it looked like his um, his injuries were below the knee. And I would think that it might be handier to have the knee. I don't know. I don't know any of this, but he threw this line out, which was mind-boggling. Jeff got to throw out the first pitch at Fenway and was invited on hallowed ice at a Bruins game. Seeing like 20,000 people yelling for you and clapping is pretty intense. Just three weeks ago, Jeff took his first steps with the help of his new prosthetics. What have you learned about the resilience of the human body? Oh, it's, it's crazy. It's really tough. It's, it's insane. I mean, I, I'm a quick healer. They were calling me Wolverine. He's an X-Men guy that heals really quick. How do you remain so popular? They call him Wolverine, which would just happen to be in theaters now. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. There's no reason for them to call him Wolverine. Yeah, there is none. But it's Unless in, he's a dead ringer for uh, Hugh Jackman, is but, he? No, but it's in theaters now. Uh, yeah, that's 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 bad. Uh, Good uh, job by whoever that was. That well, came up with and that and this morning I had another producer, and and I I wasn't getting it. I was not, I was just not understanding what he was telling me, and he was sending me these articles. Of course, we had uh, this kid, uh, Corey Monteith, from Glee. Uh, died uh, in a hotel room. Right. And uh, so he's sending me these links. He's like, look, 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 you've taught me how to do this. You know, you, 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 you're not seeing the connection. You're not seeing the connection. I'm like, what What are you talking about? And uh, let me see if I, if I have, uh, don't we have a Hollywood Whackers jingle? We used to. Mm, I don't remember a jingle. Um, oh, yeah, there was something. It wasn't, yeah, it, I don't think you played it as much to keep it. You probably lost it. <laughs> No, I shouldn't have lost it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll see if I can find it later. Um, so this kid dies, and he sends me this link. He says, no, 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 this is about something else. I was like, okay, what is it? So here is the headline from Variety. After, after spending the past two weeks trying to turn the tide for Pacific Rim, Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures now are bracing for what appears to be a gruesome inevitability for the $185 million plus dollar monster movie with a domestic opening ranging between $25 million and $35 million, which is pretty much failure. Uh, now, let me ask you. If you st stood to lose you know, a good $150 million or $100 million or even $20, $20 million, uh, would you kill someone if you could turn the tide? Me personally, no, no, but no. But if you were evil, oh, if I was just one of those Hollywood guys, yeah, 
Uh, probably. Yeah. Um, if you so, where was this kid whacked? Now, by the way, this uh, this movie, the uh, Pacific Rim, uh, is a uh, it's a thirteen. It's a it's a G PG movie. So it's for it's for kids who love Glee. Well, there's a couple of things about this movie that are weird. Before you go on your finish your thing, at first it got a lot of negative, bad publicity early on because it was going to be a dog, supposedly. And it is a, a singing and dancing monster movie. So, I mean, they're not done to music, but they, they choreographs and all the rest. JC actually went to see the movie, uh, and he thought, thought it was quite good, even though he was under the impression it was going to be crap. Rotten Tomatoes actually gave it a 71% plus, so it, was, it wasn't a rotten movie. And the, the number of people that wanted to see it on the Rotten Tomatoes website was extremely high. So for some reason, this movie, there's something more to the story, because this movie was, was a setup to ruin someone. And it looks like it actually may not be a dog at the box office. Well, why don't you Google Corey Monteith and click on any any link and tell me what and tell me what phrase you see. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, look at the, if you can find the BBC link. It's even it's I, even I got I got the uh, Fox found dead and they're best known one of the stars in the Glee. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Confirmed in Monty's body's found room, 21st floor, Pacific Rim uh, Hotel. There you go. Yeah, well. And every single story repeats the word Pacific Rim at least five times. Hey, it's a Hail Mary, but it's not entirely out of the question. Well, there's something very suspicious about this film. And I believe there's two. There's one side trying to sink it and one side, side trying to make money on it. I don't know. But that is peculiar, a peculiar coincidence. I actually stayed at that hotel. Wow, you got out just in time. Yeah, yeah, I, I was there, let me think, <laughs> seven years ago. I'm going to show my by donating to no agenda. Imagine all the people who could do that. Oh, yeah, that'd be fab. Yeah, on no agenda. <laughs> in the morning. We have a number of people to thank for uh, contributing to the show 530 and helping produce it. Uh, Jan Willikens in Spanga, Sweden. Oh, Sweden? Sweden at $102.75. Uh, cleaning out my PayPal account, which is something we recommend. Uh, reviving an old theme which never caught on. Please, it, 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 it kind of caught on. Please de-douche me since my last value, for value, value token of appreciation was around show 200. Oh, jeez. I've right. listened since show one. Yeah. And the, um, and yeah. the last few episodes were some of the best ever. Oh, thank you. Here you go. De douched. You've been de douched. All right, we got Sir Anonymous, $100 from Oslo. Uh, Grebulon, <laughs> who's, I guess, going to be a knight. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If he's from Tel Aviv, he's the guy from Tel Aviv. And he gets uh, knighted today, yes. He needs to give us more inside dope clay does he have did he did he request for a special name for his knighting let me just check for a second um i think so it's right here just the, it's just his totals no. okay clay this is a great name in columbus ohio bachi bachi vice i'd say Bas i'd say bachi mm, uh, e either that or base vice uh, 8770 in columbus <laughs> i like bachi uh, that's a, that's a hot name. Hey, I'm Clay Bacevici. Three Musketeer. I am Eric M. 8334 from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, Mr. Peabody in uh, Natch... Nat <laughs> <laughs> sent this money and I keep forgetting to look up the name. They do it just to, just to mess with you. <laughs> Natachuk. <laughs> Natachuk, yeah. <laughs> it's something like that. <laughs> Mr. Peabody in Natachuk, Louisiana. Eighty seventy seven. Or looking forward to John trying to pronounce the town once again, and then of course he says I'm right, but we'll skip all of that. So hey, sixty nine, sixty nine, dudes. And we start with uh, Baron Grand Duke Sir Stephen Pelsmachers in uh, Belgium. Ah, hold on one second, John. My lords, dames, knights, slaves, and elites, please be upstanding for another donation from the Grand Duke. That's right. He has his own jingle now. <laughs> Michael awesome. Miller in Tiburon, <laughs> California. He tells us to take a show off. 
Carlos Severo in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oops, wait a minute. That closed it. Oh, my God. Jeez. 69, Whoa. 69, dude. It was two. We almost. Two. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That was close. Wow, really was. Carlos Severo in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, 6666. Six, six, six. Give him some job, Carmi, down there in Brazil. He's going to need it. Oh, hold on a second. Let me, uh, I wasn't, no, I wasn't ready for that. Uh, yeah. Jobs, 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 and jobs. Let's vote for jobs. Yeah! You've got karma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jose Amaldo David Binslahi. 60 bucks. Ensenada, New York. Or Ensenada. It says New York, but it's Argentina. That makes more sense than Ensenada. Was no, no, no uh, that's idea. fantastic. We've got we've got Brazil. We've got Argentina. Right. Awesome. Now we need the Colombia and Chile and then Paraguay. John Snyder, 53 bucks, Chicago. FTUK Computers LTD in the UK. And crew. Bucks. And crew. That's where, they, that's where the Rolls Royces are made. Oh, really? Crew, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Bandbusclub.com, Toledo, Ohio, 50 bucks. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Bandbusclub.com. I'm sorry. I just have to take a look at this for a second. Um, oh, no. Oh. It took me to a Facebook page. Oh, oh that oh. sucks. Oh. Brandon Savoy in Port Orchard, Washington, 50. White Mike Westerfield, 50 bucks. He's a very... He just donates all the time. Matthew Stevens, North Richland Hills, um, Texas. Mm -hmm. Ron R.J. Jennings, uh, Fall River, Massachusetts. Nuts. He did send a check in, so he has a note. He's been a pre-boner. That's all he says. All right. Uh, that happens. That's good. Um, we, we read the note. I pay solutions who we didn't credit properly last time. It was 50 bucks. Not 5,000. <laughs> so for those of you who are listening on Thursday, you can hear, here's Adam and John looking at a spreadsheet that seems weird. Uh, well, let's skip to the next one. That can't be right. <laughs> it said, I pay solutions $5,000. I'm like, really? I said, we've, we've arrived. We finally have true, you know, like it's come through. Corporate America is now going to underwrite us. But yeah, no. But we're waiting. <laughs> and that concludes our very short segment of donors here for show 530. Hopefully we'll have pick it up for Thursday. I want to remind people they have to help us out here because it's the only way we can keep keep doing this. It's uh, Dvorak.org slash N-A. And I want to remind everyone, there is actually a peerage map one of our producers is maintaining. And there's a link in the show notes. Uh, I'll make sure I put that. Uh, I'm saying that, but I want to make sure I put it, uh, put it underneath the... Uh, the credits there, oops. Uh, so you can take a look at uh, where all of our knights, dames, barons, uh, dukes, earls, and grand dukes are, and what protectorates they have. You know, it's crazy. I, I've turned off every single device. I still hear. Maybe do you have your phone on? Is your cell phone near you? That's pretty no. much. It's, is it in the room? Is it on? There's nothing in here, and I don't hear the buzz. Okay. No, I, I, you know, I hear that. I hear something trying to connect, and I, oh no, 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 I got nothing going. Oh, okay, on. I've been cell phoneless, and it's working very well. It turns out you don't really need a cell phone. God, I hear this fucking thing again. I don't understand. It's like I, it's like I hear it continuously in my headphones. All right, well, maybe there's a guy with a big dish across the street pointing it at your house. <laughs> maybe put some aluminum foil on the old, old <laughs> noggin. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Let me get my hat for a moment. Dvorak.org <laughs> slash N-A. Yes, we certainly do appreciate your donations and look forward to uh, hopefully a little longer segment on Thursday. Ryan Newdorf says happy birthday to Jonathan uh, Diggle. He turns 33 today. And Secret Agent Paul, responsible for many of our jingles, like the Open Up Jebediah, Open Up Curry, and the Pelsmockers jingle you just heard, says happy birthday to his naughty nurse, Danielle. Send pictures, my friend. 
Okay, we've got uh, two nightings today, so that is uh, very good news. Very happy as people are uh, catching up with their uh, full-time donations. John, uh, your your blade, if you uh, have it there. Yes, very good. Grebulon and Harvey Lee, step forward, gentlemen. Both of you are about to enter that exclusive club known as the Round Table, where the knights and dames all sit. So I hereby proudly present thee with the award of Sir Grebulon and Sir Harvey Lee, Knights of the Noah Gen Round Table for you. Hookers and blow, rent boys and chardonnay, hot pants and booze, long-haired heavy metal guys and scotch, wenches and beer, Ruben S. Lumen and rosé, gushes and sake, vodka and vanilla, bong hits and bourbon, spikling, sparkling cider and escorts, and mutton and mead, and a seat at the Round Table, which is expanding in diameter all the time. Yes, like many of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your contribution. I was very, very sick the other day. Yeah, you were going to say that. Yeah, so uh, um, uh, Sir Gene Barron of Texas, Sheriff of something. No, Baron de, Mar de Marriott, Sheriff of Texas, was in town. Okay, so what did he try to do? Did he bring his pricker? Well... Uh, so he took Miss Mickey and I out to dinner, which was very kind. This was Friday. Where'd you and, go? Uh, to uh, Trace. I uh, don't know it. That's uh, 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 Miss Mickey's choice, actually. She's always easy when someone else is going to pay. And um, so we come back, and he says, look, I got some cigars. Oh, you smoked a cigar and you got sick. Well, here's... Were they what, Cubanos? Uh, they were special cigars. I'm not. They were not anything identified specifically as Cubano, but they were... I hadn't smoked a cigar in over a year, mind you. And, of course, I haven't smoked at all. And you don't really inhale cigars, but... You, you better know. not. No. Uh, so we're outside, and, and, of course, it's 95 degrees, and we're out until on the back porch until... Eh, I think Gene left around quarter to two. And so I smoked one cigar with him um, and, uh, and you know, drank one or two scotch with water, which is what I typically drink. And I woke up at 7 in the morning, and I, I almost asked Mickey to take me to the hospital. <laughs> and and so I, my head... You woke up this morning at 7? No, uh, yesterday. Okay. Yeah, Saturday. Or maybe it was yeah, like don't six, go six, partying the night before the show. That's my advice. Well, no, but but check it out. We weren't partying, so my, obviously my mouth tasted like a dead bird had shit in there. But yeah, that was, that's, you know, a, that's that, the cigar. Some cigars right, do that. It's right. terrible. Um, but what had happened is the mold allergy. I, I I had not realized that the mold is like at the highest ever. And you'll recall what happens with me is my brain swells up. Um. Huh. And so, and and, and I, my head was exploding. I had to, I had to stay home all day. I was like, li I was lying down. I was huh. completely hammered. And so now I have to eat all these, you know, the nettles and the quercetin and everything. And this morning, even though we went to bed on time, I still woke up with a little bit of a headache. So it's, it's very problematic. This uh, this mold allergy. Uh, but so I, you blame the mold? Well, not the cigar and all the booze. It wasn't. That's what it was. Because it, I didn't drink anything last night. And I didn't smoke anything last night. Uh, at first, I thought Gene had literally poisoned me. I'm like, oh, that's it. Because <laughs> we all know Gene. We all know. He's gonna go. Oh god. You know. <laughs> I uh, swear. I'm like Mickey. I, nobody trusts me just because I, I'm Russian. I, I think Gene has poisoned me. Take me. That's why I'm like, take me to the hospital. It's time. I think Gene is poisoning me. He's a little paranoid. Well, <laughs> hello, Hastings. Need I say more? Ah. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> yeah. a good one. Yeah. And then the butt disappeared. <laughs> what do you mean the butt disappeared? Well, it's because the poison would have been in the cigar. And then oh, all right. Had to come and reclaim it. And, and yes, the cleaners came that day earlier than usual. And scrubbed down the house and took the butt. <laughs> Which and had all the other read his email <laughs> on the No Agenda Show. Uh, just two quick ones. Adam, being a good producer, when asked to proceed into the scanner, I politely advised that my left shoulder prevented me lifting my arms above my head. It works down under! He says now, um, this is our producer, Aiden. Snorkel, actually. Long story short. Um, in, so they, they finally put scanners in Australia, John. This is really what this is about. Uh, you'll be pleased to know they finally installed scanners in Sydney International Airport. Yes, we're pretty slow on the uptake in Gitmo Down Under, 
were probably buying the old ones that they were decommissioning up there where you guys are. They I've weren't been, using Rapid Scan, were they? I don't know. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, Got to tell us. There. Yeah. Well, we'll know. Uh, so anyway, being a good producer, he advised his left shoulder, prevented him from lifting his arms. The confusion that ensued was hilarious. <laughs> That's always fun when you can confuse officials. Uh, long story short, they apparently had an opt-out procedure, but no one knew what it was. Being the good citizen that I am, I inducted the security staff at Sydney Airport into the No Agenda Valet program with helpful suggestions like, instead of the, instead of the scanner, you have to pat me down, and someone needs to collect my things for me. Then you can swab me and my bag. <laughs> so he's telling them how to do it. Uh, everything went according to plan until the security agent advised me, pre-pat-down, hand wand metal detector scan, to go collect my bags from the x-ray table, pack it all up, and bring it to the bomb material trace scanning for scanner, scanner for scanning. To reiterate, I was asked to pack my own bag up from the x-ray machine and could have put whatever I wanted into my pockets back into the scan bag before I was treated to the hand massage. I was really oh, looking forward to that's my... a blender? Yes, he said, I was really looking forward to my first valet service experience. So even when I asked the agent, are you sure I'm allowed to touch my stuff before I'm pat down? To which the agent replied, yeah, that's fine. Nice to see that with all the new DNA scrambling security technology, it all comes unstuck with someone who isn't interested in being a slave. For what it's worth... In the layover in Dubai, I declined to try any N.A. Valley tips. I never know what grain of something might be on the sole of my shoe that might land me in jail over there. Uh, anyways, thank you very much, Snorkel, for uh, trying to help out and getting the valet service instated there in Sydney. I'm, uh, I'm surprised. Uh, uh, the now they'll work it out. And uh, finally, Hans Hafner. Uh, dear Adam, even though uh, I don't agree with everything you say, I love it when people start off like that. You know, I've always found it annoying uh, you get this, I get it because I just from writing columns for 30 years, you get these letters that come in. <laughs> I don't always agree with everything you say. Well, you know, I don't know that that wouldn't anyone would. Yeah. I mean, so why do you say that? Yeah, I wonder what it's that just, is. It's just to assume I'm a free thinker. I want you to just start that way. You know, I think for myself, <laughs> but I liked what you said. I mean, I don't know what the point of what it is. What is that? That is a very interesting phenomenon. You, 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 in 30 years, you haven't figured out where that comes from, what to... No, I've, I've ever, I'm always baffled by it. It's, it's something to do with either uh, it's a, I think apologizing it's, for writing. I think it has something to do with that. Uh, or they want to get a little – something you did is <laughs> still in their craw. <laughs> How they about they got to give you the needle. I don't agree with everything you say. Okay. I think it's okay if you, if you say – okay, here's how I would say it. And I will accept this. If you say, uh, even though I don't agree with everything you say, and excuse me for existing – I think that would be fine if you if you put those two together. <laughs> Excuse me for existing. But this is funny because he says, even though I don't agree with everything you say, you're doing amazing work. I'm running into the danger of getting my information only from the No Agenda show, which is not a good thing. I as, agree. As, yeah. As many sources of information are better than one to form an opinion. But it's by the, Can I interrupt again? Yeah. It's like there's another aspect to this. You can get all the information you want from the No Agenda show, but what we're not trying to, we're not an information show. We are a show trying to enlighten you. It's like, why would you, you know, uh, give a guy a fish when you can show him how to fish? Ooh, you know, boy. Kind of a you biblical know, thing. I should write that down. That's a great, that's a great. <laughs> yeah, you could go into your Bible. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the, so the uh, idea is you really want to go and revisit. So you, because the, we, we give you the tools to laugh. Yes. And have a great time watching <laughs> yes. the regular media. Yes, we're giving you we're giving you laughter tools. Yeah, uh, please pronounce tools properly. Tools. tools, tools. It's getting harder and harder to hear, watch, read today's journalists. No, no, no. This is where you're incorrect. I agree. We're giving you the tools so you can watch and go. <laughs> Boy, those guys are full of crap. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, that would make you incredibly annoying in any in any crowd, which is really fun. Ah, yes. No, that this we, is the entire point. Yeah, I, I don't understand why people don't get that. So, uh, <laughs> before we go into, so I have actually a couple of funny clips I want to play. But before okay. we do that, I don't have any clips. But we have to say something about Janet Napolitano. 
I, well, let me say. She finished the show on Thursday, <laughs> and boom, she quits. Okay, first of all, I'm very, 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 very sad. First, Hillary, now, Lucy, this is bad. It's terrible. Who am I going to make fun of? And there's going to be nobody I can't left think of over. Anybody else like those two? There's nobody left over. I mean, Hillary will be back, but, but yeah, well, Napolitano's done. Um, no, uh, I have a theory on this. Uh, good because I don't. Oh, I, did, I, th- I, I mean, my theory is the basic one that we'd come out with with no agenda thinking, which is she, they put her at the University of California to make sure the recruits, you know, uh, had had a clue early on. Mm-mm. No, this is a little bit longer game. Although that's a perfect place for her to go. So. First, we have to um, know that everything's coming undone. Uh, the stuff is going to unravel. There is, you know, we have this, uh, the lawsuits, you know, the, we, we haven't talked about them in a while, but that whole organization is ill. Uh, it's very, you know, there's women who are uh, harassing men. There's been lawsuits about this that, you know, gets no play in the media. But right. re- really, ve- it's a There's very lots of sexual harassment by lesbians in the yes. Department of Homeland Security, and, and it's uh, we and- talked about it. It's been the suits have been filed. Yeah, you can you can find the papers and everything, and it's a very unfriendly, unhealthy environment. I'm convinced of it. And this stuff, I mean, look, you, you only have to look at the TSA to know what's happening at the top. You know, the, the, it's rotten at, from top to bottom. Um, the FBI is now not showing up at hearings because they've messed it up. And it's going to come to, there is a slight possibility that uh, there's going to be a huge revamp going on uh, because, you know, why not? We might as well. Uh, you know, this is a, a big organization, uh, a lot of money, and, it, in, it, you know, and it's all made up stuff. It's all stuff we don't need. So, you know, it, it, it's, it, I think you need some bad stuff to come out so that then we can have a new person come in and rebuild it and it'll be invigorating and the whole security industry will love it. It's got to be cyber. And, you know, when, I think really she needed to go once she admitted that she doesn't even use a computer. That was kind of her, you know, I think everyone was like, uh, okay, you know, why did you have to say that? You know, did, why do you have to go and ruin the fun? You were doing great. I don't think she, she if you're not, if you're so far out of it, that you you wouldn't know not to say that. Open up the book. I want you to put an entry in because right. I know where this is headed. This is this is not just her going in, into uh, I mean education. Are you kidding me? Uh, I would say Ruth Ginsburg should not be eating any oysters. Ruth Ginsburg, who is a Supreme Court justice, is going to die in the next year. I'm sorry to say it. And Janet Napolitano will be our next Supreme Court judge. Replacing Ruth Ginsburg. Well, that'll be a wash. Actually be an improvement. No, no. I think it's going to be very frightening. Now it could be any. It could be. It could be Thomas. I mean, he could just. It could happen that he could just have a heart attack. But it would have to be cool with him, like on no, top of no, on top no, of a hooker. Have, they're not going to do something that extreme. It, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool though if if, Ju- if Chief Justice Clarence Thomas died on top of a hooker. Well, let's put my little thing in here, which is yeah, it would be. <laughs> that, come on, it'd be great. But that's not going to happen. Can you put it in the book just as a side note, just in case, well, so I, I can how about claim this it for an idea? If you want to go into this in this direction. Mainly because it kept being brought up in the conversation. Alito. Okay, possible. Because if you remember, we've been hearing, oh, I had Judge Alito's paperwork right in my hands. They were, you know, spying. It was one of the, it was the Tice guy. He was talking about it. Everybody oh, that's. Oh, very good. Whistle- very good. Yes. Whistleblowers that are supposed whistleblowers from the uh-huh. NSA there. They kept mentioning Alito. 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 That could be code. Write it down. Alito Boston Breaks. Alito, Boston Breaks, Janet, Supreme Court. You can feel it. You can feel it. I know. I, she's, she's a lawyer. She's t- she's all in. You know, well, it can't happen right away then because they're not going to no, no, put no, her at the no, University no, no. of California. It's, gonna take, it's no, got to be near the end of Obama's administration. It, of course, it has to be before 2016, obviously. But they have they needed someone. They needed the right person, and she doesn't have the right resume. Yeah, she's been governor. 
Um, you know, she's been in, she's run a huge department. Now she gets to do the educational part. It's perfect. She'll have everything she needs. She'll have the, you know, the background now of the, of the education. I have to dog ear this page then because it's going to be way out there. Yeah, so good. Can you just slip a note in it? Yeah, don't, a lanyard. Don't, don't you have a no agenda lanyard? I have lots slip? of lanyards. But they, they... <laughs> slip a lanyard in there. <laughs> Alito. I'm saying it's either uh, Clarence Thomas on top of a hooker or Samuel Alito with the candlestick and the Boston breaks. We'll see. But the one that really is probably the closest to uh, being too old is is definitely Kiki. Kiki Ginsburg? Yeah, that's that's what her nickname is. is a lot it really of people Kiki? don't know that. I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know her name was Kiki. That's funny. Yeah, Kiki. Hmm. Um, a f- good friend of hers told me that years ago. I always thought that was weird that no one's ever picked it up. So I have a, a couple sure. of a, a, f- a very funny clip that just kills me. It's Claire McCaskill doing a, it's, it's C-SPAN, uh, doing an investigation of robocalls. And this is the Claire and Rachel clip. And who is Claire McGaskill? Claire McCaskill is the woman that was supposed to be run out of town by the Republicans, but then they had the guy that ran against her as she's a senator, the douchebag who went on about legitimate rape or something stupid, and they couldn't win. Anyway, so she's running this, this investigation. I think this is pretty funny. Fraudulent robocalls have since filled the void and have become the source of understandable anger and frustration among the public. These automated, pre-recorded telemarketing calls that often seek personal information from unsuspecting consumers are an annoyance at best, but they can be devastating for those that are defrauded by them. It's easy to see how consumers can easily be confused by these calls. One common scam involves a call from Rachel from Cardholder Services, Mm. offering an easy way to reduce consumers' credit card interest rates. Hello, this is Rachel at Cardholder Services, calling in reference to your current credit card account. There are no problems currently with your account. It is urgent that you contact us concerning your eligibility for lowering your interest rates. Your eligibility expires shortly, so please consider this your final notice. Please press the number 1 on your phone now to speak with the live operator and lower your interest rate. Or press the number 2 to discontinue further notices. Thank you. Have a great day. Another common scam involves robocalls warning consumers that their auto warranty is about to expire. This is an important message regarding your automotive warranty. We have made several attempts to reach you. This is your final courtesy call before your vehicle is reclassified. (laughs) (laughs) Press 1 to speak to a warranty specialist or press 2 and your file will automatically be closed. In both examples, with the press of a button, the consumer is directed to an individual whose job it is to collect financial information in an effort to defraud them. Even pressing the button they claim removes the caller from their list does nothing more than identify a phone number as valid, likely increasing the frequency of unwanted calls in the future. That's good. That's a good clip. It's not quite clip of the day, but it's good. I, like well, I, you know, I never got the one about the car, but it's pretty funny. Well, the, car, the, now, the if I can just say, we get that all the time now because you know, I, I bought Miss Mickey the secondhand Ford. Right. And uh, so we uh, the, we don't even listen to the – the phone rings all day here, the one that we have as a part of the Time Warner service. It's, it's, why even bother? It's my – really, we shouldn't even have it anymore. Um, but the uh, but now we're getting all these warranty things like, oh, no, your warranty's expiring. And – and you look at it at face value, like, uh, oh, what is this? What I mean, you know? You have to look for a second because you know I I bought extra warranty with the car, so you do have like this moment of what what what's going on? And of course, you figure out that it's a scam pretty quick, but it's a big one. It's a, and it's and and you you get on the list. You, that's what happens. You buy a car, boom, you're on the list. Even Mechanics Bank is sending me weird shit now. So we have mm-hmm. we have uh, you know we have debit cards, and we um we once got a credit card. And we used it once and paid off the balance. And we we are literally getting envelopes from our bank, John, mechanics, saying... Yeah, it's obviously imp- coming from the MasterCard people. Important information enclosed. You have zero balance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not good. You need to use it. And I have a whopping $2,800 I can use. <laughs> so I'm here- so reliable. 
So the so the second clip, which is the F, just to get a, 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 an idea of the uh, of the complaints that come into the FTC, play the FTC clip about these calls. Law enforcement officials have estimated that telemarketing fraud costs Americans over forty billion dollars annually. So it is no wonder that robocalls consistently remain a top consumer complaint at the FTC as well as the FCC. The FTC alone receives more than 200,000 complaints about robocalls every month. All right. So here's the deal. Why isn't the NSA doing something about this? <laughs> what do you mean? What they got they do? all this stuff. They got all they can track these guys down. These guys are ill. If you listen to the whole hearing, everything these guys are doing is illegal. Yeah, they're running it in and out of the Ukraine and all over the world. Is none of these calls are coming from the United States, by the way. When Rachel calls you, it's bull crap. But there's 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 facilitators. There are companies that take the credit cards. There's and they're American. And we have the NSA, which apparently is recording everything, including all these calls that are coming from these phonies, and they can track anything. Why doesn't our government put a stop to this with, if we have these intelligence agencies spying on every single American 24-7? It makes no sense to me. Is it possible that this is the NSA, that they're just using no. all of your information I'm not and, then, and then to give you stupid offers? And then to also scam you so they can get the $40 billion in their coffers? That's a funny <laughs> idea. But but it's there's no way. They're not doing – where's the FBI in this? These people – there's I'm not buying it that these guys are so good with these <laughs> robocalls that they can't be found. The CEO can be found. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> this has been going on for years. Is Rachel right? <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I don't know. Well, th maybe they're not motivated. Well, you tell me. What do you think? Uh, maybe you got to convince them that Rachel's a terrorist. Mm. Well, this sure. Are, I'm. I'm trying to. That'd be kind of funny, actually. I, for some reason, I can't get it to work. I think our phone is busted. Um, I. I think I should. Uh, I should play back a couple of the calls that we get here at the house. You should just, just record them because we only get the only ones I get now is I get Rachel still. She keeps calling. And even you, though oh, you actually have gotten Rachel all the time. Oh, I've, she calls I know. daily. <laughs> yeah, you should talk to her a little while. And it says right on the caller ID card services, card services. Yeah, I just lift and hang. I mean, I don't even pick it up. I just hang up on them. You know, I got on a, I got I'll on record. a list. I, I got sold around. And so whenever 202 calls me, I know not to answer. Um, in fact, I bet you I can play a 202 if you're interested. When you answer the phone, go, this call may be recorded. <laughs> well, for, well, if, for what's, the, what's the words they use for customer safety assurance or something? Uh, for your, um, for customer, um, I don't know, what do they call it? Uh, I don't know. When they do that, though, I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to do that. Well, this call may be recorded. So I got on a list probably when I interviewed Ron Paul. Oh, and, yeah, that and, would make sense. And that is how long ago? Two and a half years. Oh, more than that. It was the, no, it was the 2008 election. Oh, it was then it was that long ago. Right. So uh, this is July 3rd, 2013 from a 202 area code, which, of course, is Washington, D.C. Hey, talk. Adam. Hey, Adam. Corey Hubbard with the Coalition to Reduce Spending, giving you a call to follow up on that letter from Peter Schiff. Um, I never got a letter from Peter Schiff, by the way. Peter Schiff? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Listen to this. People that used to work for Gary Johnson back in when he was running for president in O in 2012. And we got your name. We thought you'd be interested in what we're working on now. And I'm going to be out in San Francisco in two weeks. I wanted to see if you could spare 20 to 30 minutes to sit down with me briefly so I could talk to you about some of the really exciting things we're working on for this coming year. My number is 202 So wouldn't it be funny? I'm going to this pick was up a robocall, right? No, this is a real person. Oh, she was actually telling you this, and she's leaving a message on her machine? Yeah, this is a message oh, okay. on the machine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 812883. I'll follow up via email and hope to hear back from you. Again, I'll be out there in two weeks and would love to get your ear Woo! for a few minutes. I should, Thanks, Adam. Uh, hey, to I want to call her back and go, hey, hey, could you take off what, your dress? What, what, what are you doing for what dinner? Are you, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> she, she, doesn't, she, doesn't she have kind of a kinky, sexy voice? Uh, yeah, yeah, listen, listen. Hey, Adam. Hey, Adam, Corey Hubbard with the Coalition to Reduce Spending, giving you a call to follow up on I that. I like a hippie chick voice, nope. maybe. Yeah, well, wait, listen for a second. Jeff, 
I'm um, working with a couple people that used to work for Gary Johnson back in when he was running for president in O. Yeah, listen, listen, she has a very slight, very slight thing going on. In 2012. And we got your name. We thought you'd be interested in what we're working on now. Here, here it comes. I'm listen, be out in listen. San Francisco in two weeks. I wanted to see if you could spare 20 to 30 minutes to sit down with me briefly. So I could- oh, I'll sit down with you briefly. I got some ideas for you. <laughs> I should, I'm going to call your, her back. You, what is wrong with you? I'm gonna, cause, cause I, I want to call her back and harass her and go, hey, Corey, yeah, I got to 20 or 30. You know, I wanted you to sit down briefly, but over here. Or deep briefly, if you don't mind. <laughs> I want, sit on my lap. <laughs> People, stop calling me. I'm, I know all you want is money, Peter Schiff. How does Peter Schiff now get my number? Peter Schiff? That's what she said. Why, 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 if they want money from you, why don't they just get it from him? <laughs> it, well, which leads me to believe he's he's a scam. He's it's got no a, money. It's possible. A lot of these guys are that way. He's got no money. Peter Schiff. What's he up to? Uh, is, is, he's he, always predicting the end of the world. He's like one of those perpetual bears. <laughs> yeah. End of the world. Yeah, here you go. Peter Schiff. This is the classic. Peter Schiff. <laughs> Gold is on the verge of his biggest rally ever. <laughs> yeah, I buy that, by the way. I'm totally in on that. Yeah, you are, and this keeps falling. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way. Reality will <laughs> clobber Japan, says Peter Schiff. <laughs> I do want to make very clear that I love my wife and that I need no other sex but sex from her. Because I think at a certain point she listens to the show, it's got to eat at her. And she goes, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> it's got to eat at her. And I just, it's, it's just. <laughs> sure it does. And it's show business. Ooh, she's a milf. She's hot. <laughs> Send pictures. What is Send wrong, with, what is wrong with my pictures. husband? <laughs> Something's wrong with my husband. Uh, send pictures. <laughs> and I can always say, it's the Tourette's, honey. It's just the Tourette's. Um, I find in the examiner from last year. Cher has new crush on TV host. What are you doing? Wants what is to this? settle down. Done with bikers. Uh, we, this story just kind of came and went. What, what are you talking about? It was about? Chris Hayes, that douchebag on MSNBC. No, that's that's who Cher was with? No, she was had a crush on him. She made a big stink about it. Chris it was Hayes? Just when, it was just when Hayes was getting his he was getting uh, no. upgraded on no. MSNBC. And this was a publicity stunt, apparently. No. Wear masks to protect from MERS, coronavirus. Saudi officials ask pilgrims. Have uh, you noticed this? Uh, what do you think? I think I'm going to put it in the red book. I think they're going to try to make something, make hay with this Saudi-specific killer bug. Uh, tell me about this. You don't know about it? No. The Middle Eastern, it, MERS, M-E-R-S, which sounds oh, like... Oh, yes, MERS, yeah, Middle Eastern ro- retro, rotavirus or whatever. No, Middle Eastern Respiratory Oh, Respiratory Syndrome, syndrome yes. <laughs> yeah, well, it's killing 50% of the people who have it, except for apparently the people who have it and they have no symptoms whatsoever. They don't know how to count those. Could be everyone. And more importantly, the story in the L.A. Times, again about Saudis, which makes me suspicious... Saudi Arabian consulate posted Princess's five million dollar bail. You know, LA's yeah, that's that's all bull crap. Who gives a shit about that? I think they were they're running slaves down there in the well, Hollywood they are. Area. They, they are running slaves. That's exactly yeah. what they are. God damn! Who, if you're around the house, step away with your cell phone. It's annoying me. I can hear that. It's the, it's it's nonstop. It's like it's someone's sad. literally, like, I'm looking for the dot on my forehead, you know? Where are you? Step away. I heard it that time. It's, it, it's, 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 it just keeps going, and the phone is, I've turned the phone off. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, NSA. Maybe I should take the battery out. Is that how I have to do it now? Because, you know, you, you're turning it on remotely or something? Is that what it is? This will yeah, be a I good test. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Take, take the battery out. I'm going to right now. Let's take it. Let's see if it stops. Hold on. Okay. Battery is out. Let's see if it ends. That would be pretty f- funky, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think it'd be great. Okay. Battery is out, and I'll let you know if I hear anything. I've got the battery. So anyway, yeah, they're running right slaves, there. these Saudis. Hell yeah. So um, my favorite line was apparently some woman from the, uh, some black woman. She goes, in, once you get into Saudi Arabia, they tear up your passport and do all these things. Yeah. It's just hilarious.
Uh, now, there's something you asked Don't me. Don't marry a Saudi woman. There's something you asked me to put in the show notes about the uh, the Chinook helicopters flying over Port oh, Angeles. Oh, yeah, Port Angeles had an invasion. <laughs> My, by, so by the Mimi U.S. Army. By the U.S. Army, I might point out. Mimi calls me up during the invasion, and I can't hear a word she's saying. The choppers are so loud. I mean, she says, can you hear that? I can I can hear that better than I can hear you. It was it, there, there was apparently a bunch of uh, Chinooks and Apaches and uh, some jets flying over in a circle around Port Angeles in the area. Mm -hmm. And it was, they never called the local authorities. They got something like 250 phone calls, even though all the news reports says a dozen, which is bull crap because everyone was calling in. Apparently it was so loud. Dogs are barking and going crazy. And there's just... And then the Army finally turned out to be one of their facilities deciding to do training over the town. Which would... <laughs> and we forgot to tell all the citizens of the world, hey, we're going to be flying around scaring you. And it was at like 11.30 to 12, midnight. Can I point out that the uh, f phone interference has stopped since I took the battery out of the phone that was turned off? <laughs> no, no, this is, this is a very significant discovery. <laughs> um, l hold on a second. Let's put it back in. I had the phone off, yeah? The phone you say was off, yes. Well, no, I mean, it, it, the power was down. Now I'm going to put the battery. You had it t turned off. Yes, and I put the battery back in. Let's see what happens. See if it comes back. Okay, I'll put it over there. Yeah, well, this of course has been going, has been ongoing. We've seen it in Florida. We've seen it uh, in many different states, uh, in the Midwest, and it's all. It's obviously it's all um, to condition you for the coming apocalypse. There are condition you for a crackdown. Yeah. No. Oh. There's plenty of places, you know, especially in the Pacific Northwest. If you want to just fly around like an idiot. Uh, w wasting probably a million dollars in taxpayers' money over the town of Port Angeles. You can just move south a little bit, and it's just all woods. There's nothing uh, – it, much of Washington State is is very empty. Oh, and you can oh, do it oh, there. oh, 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 Did you hear it? No. It's back. What kind of a phone do you have? That's it, a, a, a note, a Galaxy Note. Maybe it's just shorting out. No, it's the it, the transmitter is it is transmitting. But the, you can't it can't be transmitting because you've got it turned off. It, and let's, you just let's, the battery shh, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. I'm, I'm telling you, it is now transmitting again. It is not turned on, and it's transmitting. What does that tell you? Yeah, it tells me a lot. Believe me. Hey, let me turn. Oh, there it is. Oh, there you go. Perfect. All right, so this phone is off, okay? I'm holding it now near the microphone, and I'm going to take – and uh, people who – and you maybe couldn't hear it through the Skype, but now I'm going to take the battery out again. So clearly, you know, this is what they always say. is like even if your phone is off, they can turn it on. They can listen to it. It's transmitting your yeah, – you hear it? What? Did you hear it? And now no. I just took the battery out, so now it should be gone. Yeah, there you go. Big joke. Very funny, guys. Ha, ha, ha. Well, wait a minute. If they want to hear anything, why don't they just get to go on the No Agenda stream <laughs> and yeah, and they can hear everything. And you then, got a huge microphone. And do and donate. Yeah, and donate, <laughs> cheapies. <laughs> that is that is that's just crazy. It's transmitting. Well, this is Android, of course. You know, it could also just be for advertising purposes. It's Google. It's a holes. This is this is this is why I'm I'm not carrying a phone anymore. But now, but <laughs> I, I can't even have it on during the show because it has to or off you mean, during the show because you can't even have it off during the show. Yeah, I have to take the battery out. Really, that's quite. Well, annoying. one of these days they'll put some mercury batteries in there as backup, and then the signal will still always work. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm 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 opting out. I'm not participating in it anymore. I'm really not. Bull crap. I have not been carrying this phone around for ever since I told you two weeks. Yeah. I have I have not used the phone. I'm not taking it out. I go I've out with doing that for years. I very rarely use my cell phone. Yeah, but do you take it with you? Sometimes, yeah. maybe. If I forget it, it's no big deal. Right. Well, okay, but you know, for me I've grown up always having a phone around and and now I'm just like, you know, any you want to reach me? You can wait. I'll talk That's to you later. my attitude always. Well, I know. But There's it, nothing that important. What if it's an emergency, someone will say. <laughs> what if it's an emergency? What, what did you do before cell phones when there was an emergency? You dealt with it. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> yeah. Oh, it could be an emergency. You Are you walking around all day with a cell phone because there might be an emergency? How many emergencies calls have you gotten in the last five years that were so important that you had to take the call immediately and take action? There was You're not a doctor. No, there was only one call, and I'm not expecting those anymore because I've always told my daughter, if you ever need to get home or something and you don't, you know, something's wrong or you're drunk or whatever, you call me, no questions asked. I'll make sure you're picked up or I'll pick you up. No questions asked. That's what I've always said. And she called me once, once in the middle of the night and said, Dad, no questions asked. And no questions. Can you send me? And she was in London. Can you send a car for me? She said, it'll be right there. That's once. That is really the only time I can remember. Yeah. That's it. So so that argument is bull crap. Yeah. Do we have and time? She would have done fine going on her own if you could, she couldn't get a hold of you. Um, she would have probably been less happy, but, yeah. you know. Can I, um, can we do one last thing here? Something that kind of like a, it's a, a regarding Texas and the abortion thing and Battleground Texas and uh, some information I've dug up? Or it, it, should we keep that for Thursday? It, it, it can keep. It's not, it doesn't really matter. Well, if it's, you know, I, I thought that you beat that one to death already, but if you want to do one more thing, you want you to finish it off, and then we can close the show, and then okay. Thursday we'll be fresh. Okay. <laughs> we'll be fresh. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so a report came out from the BBC, and it was very interesting. It was um, facts of, on induced abortion worldwide. And someone forwarded this to me, <clears throat> and... I'm sorry. It was uh, was that what that wasn't what it was called. It was called something else. The BBC Europe's abortion rules. That's what it was called. Uh, so Europe, Europe's abortion rules. And you'd be kind of um, and this is why I, I was kind of stunned, thinking here we are. We're in Texas. We're in crazy red state Texas. Horrible Republicans who are actually have the audacity. And the, this passed, of course. This passed. The bill passed. It's now law in Texas. Oh, uh, Wendy didn't get her way. <laughs> Wendy didn't get her way. Oh. And this is um, there's a gestation period of 20 weeks, so five months. Uh, you cannot uh, just get an abortion uh, legally after five months without there being it's a long time. It's quite a long time uh, without there being, you know, of course, um, uh, 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 danger to the mother, uh, severely disformed, whatever or the child will have no life, rape, incest, all that stuff still is on the books. But it was 20 weeks. And then the, um, you know, the whole making clinics very difficult to stay open, which is just an extrapolation. Uh, as, of course, we know this is probably for Rick Perry's uh, sister, who was going to open up new clinics, which will do this for 10 times the amount of money. But that's not what this is about. I was very uh, surprised to read the rules uh, in EU countries. Um, so I'll just go through some briefly. Austria, uh, availability on request, uh, but not... Um, 12 weeks is the gestation period there, uh, or gestation limit. Belgium, 12 weeks. A woman must, a woman must say she's in state of distress. Uh, Bulgaria, on request, 12 weeks. Uh, only if the woman is suffering from a proven, documented case of disease. Um, wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second here. You're, I've been led to believe that the great liberal Europe is what we model ourselves after for this sort of thing. This was the surprise I had. Uh, 12 weeks, a woman must claim to be, this is France, must be in state of distress because of her pregnancy. After 12 weeks, abortions are allowed only if the pregnancy proves a grave danger to the woman's health. Uh, Germany, woman must receive proper counseling three days before the procedure. This is stuff that has been, been fought over in America. We don't have this. Counseling... No. Um, let's see. No, the counseling is a right wing plot. Twelve weeks in Hungary, a woman must obtain counseling. Okay, so I'm like, wow, I I've been led to believe that the liberal Europe was exactly the opposite. So I fire this off on a little email to my respected and loved Obama bot female friends. Oh, this is good. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I get. <laughs> is this a show closer? Or is this you're, a show closer? You're just like a mean spirited. You're going to be the worst old man. Well, I I have I stand. I, mean, I admire this. By I the stand way. on the shoulders of I giants. Totally admire this because it's beyond my pale. <laughs> I'm telling you, I stand on the shoulders of giants, John. Looking at you. <laughs> so here's the response I get back. Uh, I wonder if the demand for abortions is lower in Europe due to easier slash free access to birth control. Also, 
Sex education has got to be better in Europe than in the U.S. Hello, abstinence-only education. So perhaps women don't feel the need to fight for abortion on demand there, question mark. I'm actually surprised Italy isn't more restrictive. I had assumptions that between the influence of the Roman Catholic Church and concerns over the low birth rate of, uh, of Italians, there'd be stricter abortion laws. So now I'm like, hold on a second. Nowhere in this document did it mention demand for lower abortion for abortions lower in Europe. And so I said, hey, you know, that's not in the document. In fact, I found the uh, uh, the document, and this is from Gutmacher.org, the Gutmacher Institute, which is uh, gets its information from the World Health Organization, and its uh, most recent numbers are from 2008. And this is what I sent back. I said, wow, I'm astonished because if you look at the number of abortions in North America in 2008, it was 1.4 million. In Europe, 4.2 million. Now, of course, you know, there's differences in population, so there's also a number nice. for... Well, hold on. There's also uh, a number for abortions per 1,000 women. North America, for every 1,000 women in 2008, there were 19 abortions. In Europe... For every 1,000 women, there was 27 abortions. So I send this back and I say, holy crap, did you know that this, exactly what you and I were saying, did you know that this free liberal thinking, sex ed, uh, free condoms, a free pill, everything Europe actually has 3 million more abortions per year, 10% more per 1,000 women? I, and I'm flabbergasted by this. And I get something back. She says, oh, wait a minute. And and so now uh, my friend, she's like, hey, this is really weird because I have um, a paper that actually says the opposite that this is you know this is not true. Oh, uh huh. Let nice. Me, yeah, let me bring it up. So she she said then and 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 I haven't uh, figured out where she got this from, but she's on lists, of course. And this is from um, this is from the. National Campaign to Prevent Teen and Unplanned Pregnancy, and their report from October 2012 is titled Unplanned Pregnancy and Abortion in the United States and Europe, Why So Different? And I'm like, wow, this is a gem. So first of all, the National Campaign to Prevent Teen and Unplanned Pregnancy is a non-governmental organization, and from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, alone it received $100 million, well-funded organization. Yes. And I look at this, and the first thing I think, and you, John, you and I know, when you have an organization like this, you got to keep the budget. The number one thing, when you have this type of organization with this kind of money, your number one mission is to keep the organization going. We're not going to solve anything. Would you agree that that's kind of what you have to do? Yeah, it's what you, no, it's what you, it's what you want to do, too. I mean, you got this is, a, this is a payday. Yeah. Okay, so the title of this report is Misleading at Best. Again, Unintended Pregnancy in the U.S. and Europe, Why So Different? Which, of course, implies there's a huge difference. And we know the difference is, yeah, in Europe, they're a lot higher. Now, here's the, here's, I'm not going to read the whole abstract, but a little piece from the abstract. And this is, of course, what my friend had read. Quote, Abortion rates have declined significantly in the United States since 1981, but remain higher than many European countries. Hello, bingo, there's your keyword, many European countries. So yeah, the, there's probably a couple that, yeah. Well, well, right. oh, so again. Trick, the, trick, tricky. So the, again, the title is Unplanned Pregnancy and Abortion in the United States and Europe. Why so different? Not in many countries in Europe. In fact, the study they did, John, was in a whopping four European countries of the 28 in the European Union, which and I'm sure that uh, France and uh, Italy and the United Kingdom and Poland and Portugal and Spain are very sad they were left out because what they chose were the Netherlands and Belgium, which you can almost call one country, Germany and Sweden. And they, and they took the numbers from these four countries and extrapolated it out, and this is the great thing. In the report, they actually use the same, they reference the same Gutmacher numbers for America and show the same uh, 1.4 million abortions, 19 per 1,000, but they never show the European number. They only extrapolate these four countries. And nowhere is there mention of 
uh, I don't know, the fact that they're all monarchies and that, you know, there's a, you know, which is a t- totally different political structure. Um, there's no reference that in these exact countries, cities have huge Muslim populations. Uh, Amsterdam, 14 percent. Brussels, 25 percent. Berlin, 10 percent. Malmo, 20 percent. None of this is in the study. No, it's all about, oh, they have much better sex education and they have free health care and all this. And meanwhile, I could take four states from America and make our number even lower or much higher, depending on which state you want. Yeah, no, it's obviously a scam. If I took Delaware, Florida, New York, yeah, and Connecticut, the average... Your point is, is long since been made. This is just manipulated. This is like if we're, if, if we're uh, cooking the books. They've cooked the books. So you'll appreciate the uh, in their uh, in their summary. This report has sought to generate suggestive evidence. No kidding, on which predictors might account for the high rate of abortion in the U.S. relative to Europe, which is a lie, and which might be most fruitfully explored in future research. Send us more money. <laughs> That's what that means. Yes, of course it is. Can you believe this shit? This is everything. So, and to bring it right back around like they like to do on the talk shows, it's all about global warming. <laughs> In the morning. That's right. We're all going to die. Enjoy that. It's all about global warming. <laughs> if only they had put that in there. Clearly, the abortion rate. <laughs> clearly, the abortion rate is much higher due to global warming. I would have felt better than the "we need to do more studies." Yeah, how about study the other countries that make up Europe? Hilarious. All right. Uh, well, I guess I can put the battery back in so that they can listen to our after show. Yeah, because yeah. you know they really want. Yeah, they can Probably hear the best part of the show for them. <laughs> it's like, what are they hey, saying now? See how, what is their methodology for picking the art? art. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Darn. Coming to you from uh, the uh, Travis Heights hideout here in the capital of the Drone Star State. I'm very happy to say uh, I'm Adam Curry in the morning to y'all. And from northern Silicon Valley, where I always keep my battery out of my phone. Who doesn't? I'm John C. Dvorak. We'll be back on Thursday with another live show right here on No Agenda. The best podcast in the universe. Dvorak. Dot org slash N A